Hello, everybody. Welcome to our coverage of the Sinkerfield Cup 2022, a classical chess tournament played over the board featuring the still world champion, Magnus Carlsen. He will face Jan Nepomnesi today. Now the big, big game of the round is Ali Reza Firuja versus Fabiana Caruana. We'll be here for a while. This is round one and I couldn't be happier to have the people's favorite back with me. Rustam Kazimchanov is here. Rustam, how have you been? Uh, I've been good. I've been good. I, I missed you. I missed our friends here. Uh, and I think they missed me. I'm already getting a lot of love in the chat. At least one user says that it's nice to have me back. I'm, I'm flattered. That counts. We're delighted to have you back as well and to have a classical tournament with a lot of the, the big guns, no? We have Magnus, Nepomnesi, Ali Reza, Fabi, Wesley, MVL, Mohamed Yarov, Dominguez, Aronian, Hans Niemann. A lot of big guns. Be nice. yeah, but some guys are conspicuously missing, right? Ding Liren. What's up with Ding? He's not allowed to travel outside China still if it's not the candidates? What's the status there? I don't know. I don't follow his career so closely. Yeah? I'm out of the loop of Chinese uh, social media. I don't know. Maybe you know it better. I thought you were our Asian correspondent. If you don't know, who will? <laughs> yeah, but I'm all, I specialize in Uzbek and Indian guys. I can yeah. tell you what Arjun is doing, for instance. I don't know. Winning 30 rating points in whatever tournament he's playing? At least. Yeah. <laughs> must be nice. Yeah, Your must Ding be. is not here. Rapport is also not here. I saw some mysterious tweet that because of the COVID travel restrictions, he couldn't go. He was replaced by Hans Niemann. Ah, he was the one who got replaced by Hans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But also Djokovic couldn't go, right? They are still not allowing uh, unvaccinated people, I guess. Yeah, I think those are the rules. I think you no longer need a test or anything, but you need to show your double vaccinated or whatever. Mm -hmm. But a lot of guys made it. And the big game, of course, has to be Carlson Nepomneshi. Fresh off, well, not that fresh, but it still feels fresh. It's almost a year ago of playing a World Championship match, which Carlson won, as we remember. Also, he took over the lead in their head to head matchup. He famously was down, whatever, two to four going into the match. Now he's up six four. But Nepomneshi looked strong in the candidates, no? He looked good, yeah, but he was also helped by uh, by an unusual collapse of Fabian. No? Yeah, this was this was really weird. Yeah, they were they were both they looked in top shape, and suddenly Fabi lost all his games. Yeah, Fabi started with five out of seven, and it looked like he could even potentially have gotten more points. Looked so strong, so well prepared. Then he lost his black game to Nakamura, and it all fell apart. He scored one and a half out of seven. In the second second half, yeah, Nak Nakamura. He was basically uh, uh, he he made uh, he both stopped uh, Fabi and he made Ding Liren a world championship participant, right? So Nothing he... happens in chess without Nakamura's involvement. Indeed, indeed. Magnus has denied that he was gonna have played the next match. He famously won't play the next world championship match. He has denied that he was gonna play if Nakamura made it. Nakamura had speculated that Magnus said no, he wouldn't have played either way, but he would have liked it less, the prospect of a world champion, Nakamura. But I, I know I was not happy about how it all sort of went down. I think that to be fair, Magnus would have to do this at least before the tournament. To make it to make it official or the Ali Reza part or in general? Like, no, just to make it fair thought. towards the players, right? Just say, guys, you're playing for two spots. Yeah, and good luck to you guys. Yeah. I think I listened to his podcast interview with Lex Friedman. That, that was also sort of his intention, but many of the guys also just, yeah, didn't believe it. Yeah, Fabi was clearly playing only for first all the way. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I'm sure Fabi has a lot of regrets. We can get into those later. But for now, let's look at the action. Uh, let's let's do this, yes. 1d4 by Carlson. No surprises. On the first three moves, Nepomneshi 
pretty much switched from playing the Grunfeld to playing knight f6, e6, d5, or the Nimzo. Cousin doesn't want to play g3, no Catalan this time around, but he plays a very rare move in this move order. The move c takes d5. I think I've never faced this move. In all my years as a Queen's Gambit player, I never faced this. Probably didn't have sleepless nights about facing it either, no? <laughs> Probably not, no. <laughs> That's a surprise just to explain briefly. If white starts with knight c3 here, most top players play bishop b4. Because now after d5, c takes d is the main option. And here after e takes d, white would not play knight f3, but start with bishop g5, putting more pressure on the black construction. So it's not so easy for black to get c6 and potentially bishop f5. Well, if you are already committed to knight f3, now after d5 takes, takes knight c3, this has always been considered harmless because of c6. And then, depending on circumstances, black can put his bishops out and equalize easily. That was the the theory, no? Yeah, but Magnus usually has his own opinion. Played c6, bishop f4. Normally, bishop d6 could be considered now, right? Yeah, and one go, that looks... Very, very natural. Mm -hmm. But also, if you play, if you play bishop e seven here, white plays h three, or what does white do? Maybe h three and then e three. And... Yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering if, in general, if we get this bishop here. Maybe he's prepared something with with g four here. I'm not sure. Yeah, but this I think at least exists. Yeah, this is yeah. not worse than normal theory. Um, and even bishop d six, knight e five looks natural to me. Yeah. And then maybe e3, bishop e2, g4, who knows? Yeah, at the very least, Magnus has come to play and he's played something. There, yeah, I've also might have looked at this once, I can't recall anything, but it's never been considered to be a critical test of black setup. The opponent she goes bishop f5. Also very logical, keeping the option of bishop d6 open. Yeah, but this bishop is sometimes vulnerable to either knight h4 to h3 g4, so it's not entirely happy there. Yeah, white doesn't just want to go e3 bishop d3. He will try to fight against the guy somehow. Yeah? Hmm. The chess twenty four chat is so active. I cannot keep up. It's good to hear. Hi everybody. Twitch is saying, guys, focus on Hans Niemann since he's the top seed. I think we'll have time to look at all the games. This is a classical tournament there. You could usually with five games running, we can look at all of them. Of course, we'll cover the Hans Niemann action. As well. Another opening everybody loves. The Berlin. And Hans has Hans finally refuted the Berlin. Plays rook to e1. And after knight d6, usually people take on e5. And we get this slow theory debate here after bishop f1. But Niemann goes rook to e1, knight d6, pawn to a4. Naturally enough, defends the bishop. I get so confused. I, I must have looked at this. I think everybody's looked at all the sidelines in every position here. But I cannot recall a thing. Have you, have you seen this move pawn to a4? I must have seen it. Yeah. Also, I think the idea is that a6, the way uh, Levon played, knight e5, you get similar positions, but uh, you claim that a4 is uh, is a better move for white than mm -hmm. a6 is for black. Now you play bishop f1, and then maybe rook a3 one day. Wow. One day, yeah. And the day may never come. But also in all these boring... Positions like this, I don't know, just to put something on the board. <clears throat> I've noticed engines are very often giving a4 as the first move for white without mm -hmm. a6, a4 included. So it's maybe just spirit of the neural networks that I putting the pawn on a4. possible that a5 has this paralyzing effect on black's uh, queen side. Maybe this pawn is good one day. Yeah. Hmm. 
Levon does not seem shocked by a4. Goes a6, knight e5, bishop e7. Here we are. Do you know Hans Niemann? A little bit, yes. Shall we worry about him? I watched his interviews during whatever they played this Miami tournament. Mm -hmm. Some of it, of course, had great comedic value, like the chess speaks for itself and depend on the interview. But I also felt like there's there's a lot of darkness, no? And I know we all know how frustrating chess can be. Is Hans okay? I think he's okay, yes. So I think he's okay. He's also young, right? And uh, emotional. Mm -hmm. I have been very emotional myself as a young player. I'm sure so have you. And... Never. But again, okay, so... without, without giving any spoilers, yeah, the theme of the day, Lord of the Rings. Any good? I haven't seen it yet. Have you seen the first, what's out, the first two episodes? No. I mean, they are like out right now and I am kind of here. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought you maybe had the time to, to, to take a pick. Maybe the chat, maybe the chat has seen it. Yeah. Chat watches everything. I thought but this no. was clearly uh, the, the, the main thing today. I've been waiting for this day for a while now. You would rank the new Lord of the Rings series, whatever it's called, higher than the Castle and the Pomnishy clash. Well, I mean, to be fair, Castle uh, and Nipomnishi clashes are more frequent. I don't know. We sat through 72 hours of Lord of the Rings, no? 72 hours? I don't know. You must have seen a different version. <laughs> maybe, maybe the Peter Jackson director's cut wasn't quite 72 hours. But yeah, I think I think you're probably right. No, I should check it out. I haven't seen the House of the Dragon stuff yet either. I'm I'm not up to date with anything. Yeah. But okay, there were so many titles I was eagerly awaiting in the year 2022. One of them was the Fantastic Beasts and uh, no, they didn't do it for me this time. I'm very sorry to hear that. I know, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Did young Dumbledore not meet your expectations? I just, the whole movie somehow seemed absolutely pointless and stale and blunt, you know, like a soup that was forgotten to be, you know, salted. And... I don't know what to tell you. <clears throat> we have to get back to chess. That's that's my, my exit here. I haven't <laughs> seen any Fantastic Beasts recently. But I have seen Ali Reza crush the Rapid and Blitz event. Seems in great shape, but now it's oh, back to was classical. A bit of an overkill, no? Didn't he win like eight games in a row at some point? No, it's just he won like with five rounds to spare, five points ahead of the head of yeah. everybody. It was insane. But also, did you notice? Yeah, Fabi is playing like a lot of new openings. He must have done a lot of work for the candidates. Yeah, I think even in the candidates, it showed mm -hmm. he was tremendously well prepared. No, like. Mm -hmm. Showed so many ideas. Is this yeah, new to him? This knight c6. Well, uh, this e3, one is e5, quite a bit, This though. position is definitely new to him. Yeah. E5 maybe is new. Yeah, maybe. E6, like he used to play e6, d4, d5. This uh, whatever, whatever they're called. Like, is it, what is it? Semi tarash or like is it's it semi -semi symmetrical tarash or like... symmetrical <laughs> semi tarash? But it's not semi. No, it's just tarash. I don't know. I thought tarash was just without all these knights. Yeah, d5, e6, c5. Yeah. Opening names are tough, but I would think Tarash is this and Semi Tarash is this. Mm -hmm. And this, whatever mover you get it from, I, I always call it symmetrical Tarash. But makes sense. Who knows? It looks fairly symmetrical. Not today. Fabi plays e3, pawn to e5. Another position I'm not very familiar with, but I have looked at whatever. Should be two or d4 here. Yeah, d4 b3. leads to very exciting lines, right? After takes, takes uh, e4, and then knight e5, bishop b4. 
Yeah, this can get very sharp, no? Like mm -hmm. Maxime and the guys played this. But what's queen b3? Stops d5. So why am I constantly asked about Chicken Chess Club podcast? What is it? I don't know. Club podcast. Wow, you don't know. You don't know my podcast? That's just shocking. <laughs> you have to come on as a guest. It's You're not that chicken. I'm not sure if you're qualified. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Who did you already have as guests? No, no. It's So far, it's just Peter Heine, Laurent, and me. And we talk nonsense. I think that's the concept of the show. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm afraid in this illustrious company, I would feel ill at ease. <clears throat> that's very, very polite way to turn us down. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I can, I can highly recommend it. We've come out of the dark days of the Chicken Chess Club podcast, where Peter Heine was campaigning to become FIDE deputy president. Yeah, um, his campaign didn't go too well, did it? Depends what side you look from it. The result wasn't great. He got 15 votes. The opponent got 160, so they lost by a big margin. But I guess for him, it was a good thing. Like, it's something he felt strongly about he's a principled guy and yeah I, I thought I'm not sure I didn't really support his campaign as you would know had you listened to the podcast but um, I thought it was good for him to just not just you know tweet about it but to do something get involved mm -hmm. he went to Chennai met the delegates I thought it was a good thing for him mm. but Queen B3. That's a weird um, position to get in a super tournament after five moves, no? Like D6, yeah. D3. Is it that important to stop D5 that you put the queen on this very ugly square? Yeah, I would think like can go G6, Bishop G7 castles and get a comfortable version yeah, of this whole line. Looks pretty fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I doubt Black could have problems. Maybe Alireza just wants to get the game. That's been his approach also with both colors in the candidates. He's tried very hard. To but get also, he lost with games. white against Fabi in the candidates. He lost with white in a rapid game uh, in St. Louis a few days ago, right? So he has been struggling a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's true. Also, the overall score, well, Fabi's older, so it's not too surprising, but I think it's clearly in Fabi's favor 4 1 or something in, in classical. Mm -hmm. Ali Reza, he trained with Kramnik, no, for the candidates, maybe. I hear this maybe Kramnik told everyone, him yeah? Like everyone who is, who is working on chess mentions the name of Kramnik. Is is Vladi working with everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like whenever I want to work with some people, they're like, you know, you cannot come in February because Kramnik will be there, but you can come in March. Yeah, I'm always, you know, the next one in line. Ah, uh, so Kramnik is... He's taking your business away. Yeah, yeah. He's basically my oh. one of my main competitors. Ah, I had no idea. Yeah, we move in parallel circles somehow. Not the same circles, obviously, but very parallel. I see. So after Kramnik left Ali Reza's French beach mansion where they were training, you you were you were next to show up, yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how it works, yes. Oh, okay, I had no idea. If I put the bishop on e7, g6 looked mildly more normal, but the cell has to be fine. Huh? Yeah, he probably thought if he can't develop the bishop in one move, oh, why bother? Hmm. Fair enough. Also, then later you have a plan. You can castle, go rook e8, bishop f8, g6, bishop g7. <laughs> yeah, which is always nice. And then rook f8 back, right? To support. Yeah, yeah, to support. Five, exactly. I don't know. It looks, it looks like we're in for a long maneuvering game. Well, yeah, it could be a long night. Oh. How long are these games? It's like 90 minutes plus 30 seconds per move. And yeah, we then... Were, uh, we, with our producer, uh, Tadesh, we were trying to work out the math. And we came to like five and a half hours, worst case scenario. You mean best case scenario? Well, depending, you know. Mm. Yeah, that that makes sense. So, 
this regular feed it time control here, 90 plus 30 seconds for the first mm -hmm. 40 moves, then half an hour for the rest of the game. Once again, with 30 seconds per move. Yeah, I don't like it. I mean, uh, uh, all the controls are fine, but don't you have the feeling that every event has a different time control? Yeah, that I think we're used to, but they should just use the... If it's classical chess, I like the control they use in the candidates so much better. Like, have a real time control at move 40. Mm -hmm. Make it two hours for 40 moves. After that, you can give extra time. Ah, you, you want, like, real-time troubles, yeah? Yeah. Take ones. No, because with the 30 seconds per move, it's the exact same time as if you gave two hours for 40 moves. But you're forcing players to use 30 seconds on every move in order to avoid any excitement. Why would we force them to do that? I never understood. I understand it later. You don't want people to get flagged in a rook ending or whatever. So their increment makes sense. But before move 40, never been a fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't mind either way. G3, sorry, I keep staring at this at this game. Do you think this is some sort of prep or is he just freestyling it? I think Kramnik taught him. Taught him the English opening, taught him to play Queen B3 to stop T5. So Kramnik experimented with some of these maneuvers. Now yeah. G3. Although White is really not fighting for any advantage here, yeah? but he is uh, mm -hmm. taking his experienced opponent out of the book. Yeah? This is also worth something. Yeah, very much so. As Nakamura used to say, this guy Fabi, he's all theory. Short castles, that one he found by himself. <laughs> Chats are debating which which chats we're reading. All the chats, don't you worry. Shall we yeah. check out some other games? Yeah, let's let's do this. Yeah, this one looks uh, a bit boring. Uh... Wesley, so proud member. I'm not sure if he knows he's a member, but he's a member of the Chicken Chess Club, and he plays the opening. We love in the door. The semi tarosh with CD five, CD four. In your many coaching ventures, have you been tasked with refuting this line? Um, no, no, no. I mean, recently some guy at the Bundesliga played this against me and uh, and Vincent Keimer uh, complained to me bitterly about the existence of this opening after. This is kind of the extent of my experience with this line. Fair enough. Yeah, guys aren't happy with it. With the computer, black holds all of this stuff reasonably comfortably. I mean, they're trying trying once in a while. You see some new move here, some A3 or whatever, but overall it seems like Black has been has been doing fine here. So Bishop G5 has become more or less the main move, I would say. But here it's still tough to ask any questions. And I'm assuming Wesley is well familiar with the with the intricacies. But, I mean, Yarov, he got some sort of a position, right? I mean, if we look at the position at live board. Ah, but once Wesley blitzes out king of eight, you will, we will have to wonder. Rook d1. Is, is king should... of eight the move? I always mix up everything. Was the move in a similar position? King of eight looks, I don't know, looks, looks strange to me. Well, the point is where... <laughs> I think even if you have rook ac8, you could do it. Point is to prepare d4 without running into bishop h7. Oh, wow. And in some lines, you could also jump around. It made some sense, but I'm not sure if it's this exact position. And what if I prevent d4 by moving my bishop? My bishop somewhere b1. Then you'll play knight a5 and claim c4 and so on, right? I will claim great weakness here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think King of 8 is one of those moves that you can only play when you know it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's see if it does. 
problem with these lines is computers will always say zero 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 but looking at it it's not that fun for black is it like if you were shown this position in the old days you would say white is a little better no but you would say black still has to 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 prove that he's yeah. all right yeah and it, it still looks like this to me wesley can you prove it I think I don't think Mamid Yarov is unhappy with us with this development. No, I'm a bit surprised Wesley's spending time because I think this is all. I would have to look it up, but I think this is all main mainline stuff. C H F T one. I do believe this is the move. Curious, Wesley will apply. Oh yeah, this is a big new line. They played this against each other in Sinkerfield Cup. Where you know Wesley equalized fairly fairly easily. Let's see how it goes this time. Then we have Lenier Dominguez against MVL. This looks like like a blast from the past. Lenier is consistent, he keeps analyzing the old main night of main lines, mm -hmm. keeps asking questions there. Are you a night off guy? You were a bit of a night off guy, right? A bit, yeah, a bit. Yeah. Um, I wish I played more night off in my life. But, but, you know, at some point you get lazy and you start playing some Spanish lines. I mean, you know, you know how it is. Yeah. No, I wish someone had told 14-year-old me, stop playing G6 on the first move every game. Play the night off, you idiot. No I'm pretty sure me. a lot of people told you this. <laughs> no, no one ever told me. I had my book, Winning with the Modern. I stuck to it. Uh, I think you could only be happy that you didn't get the book, Winning with the Hippo, no? Or whatever this was called. Is there a book like that? Yeah, yeah, had that. Uh, Tiger Hilar person yeah, wrote a fascinating book. No, but he's. Uh, is it about the hippo? His book is also about the modern, no? Like sometimes. I think he also has a hippo. I mean, definitely. Yeah, hippo. Because he also tries to explain the opening in some sort of colorful metaphors, like leaving your hippo out in the um, when it rains or something like this, and it's supposed to mean some setups. I, I get very confused. So the hippo is basically this setup, no? Like yes, yes, seven, yes. like D seven, A six, B six, H six. Then usually it's also important as a true hippo player to go king f8, king g8, king h7. Yeah, and also uh, it's usually important that if you bring a knight to f6, it has to be the the the, the queen's knight, and the knight on yeah, six yeah. has to be the king's knight. Otherwise, it's not fair. Yeah. So this fast. is basically. Yeah. I, I wasn't aware of that, but yeah, I'm not sure if that would have helped my my chess development. Lenier, however, he's a very developed chess player. Big expert on all these Knight of Lines. He also plays these positions with both colors, right? Feels like every game of his is this position. King b1, bishop g5, bishop to e7. So white gives up the pawn on d5. What does he have in return? Well, he has two bishops and a very safe king, and uh, this is already something. Pawn to a3. I think a3 is at least a very rare move. I mean, the usual moves are like g3 and h4 and, and, uh, and something like this. Uh, queen e1. And I think uh, our friend Leko played also a million games in these positions. Bishop b3 and all this. Yeah. Yeah, I think even in the very old days when I was working with Leko, this position was already a topic like bishop g5, g3, or mm -hmm. it's been around. But yeah, a3 also looks rare to me. Then yeah, however, he will have looked at this. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's actually, it's very clever, right? Like after queen c7, g3. Now, if you play knight b6, for instance, and white takes on f6 and uh, takes on d6, this is uh, the case where you would rather have your queen on d8, right? Where nothing is hanging. Ah, apparently, this position has already been played by Lenier against Jack in Bucharest earlier this year. Okay, that's somewhat less surprising. But then it's very surprising that Maxim seems unprepared, right? If Lenier played it in tournament game a few months ago, you would think, you know, you'd, you'd check it, right? Yeah, but it sometimes happens to Maxim that he's caught unawares in the opening, no way. But usually if your opponent played it in a classical game two months ago, this shouldn't happen, right? I agree. Maybe he's just weighing his options. A3, queen c7, g3 of the board. They played some bishop with three knight off as well in this rapid and blitz. I saw some forced, forced draws there. But yeah, in general, I think Lenier, he's just a consistent worker. No, he sticks to his territory, keeps finding new ideas. Yes, and he's very um, he's a very hardworking fellow. He sits there with his computer and just works on chess all day long. At least that's how I remember him. Living the life. Yeah. Where's, where's he based now? He's in St. Louis, like everybody? I think so. But okay, St. Louis is... I mean, I haven't been to St. Louis since 2019, almost three years. Do you miss it? Uh, not one bit. Wow. Strong words. <laughs> I literally said not one bit. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been. It's, but it's the mecca of chess. No, they have the chess club and the, the horse oh, statue that's, outside. That's what they would like you to think. Yes. Mm. But um, I mean, I know. I have a feeling that uh, chess has uh, a lot of centers in the world right now, not all of them in the United States of America. I would claim that even, you know, those big guys have a place in on the map. Oh, yeah, we'll have to talk about that. Yes, yes, yeah. we'll have to, yes. Uzbekistan, your guys won the chess Olympiad. <laughs> yes, yes, they did. I told you, this, this guys are pretty special. Nobody believed me. I'm not sure that's exactly <laughs> what, you, what you told me. <laughs> Let's have a look at Magnus. E3, H3. It should be 7 and G4. Of course, he's trying to mix it. He doesn't want to play Bishop T3. Bishop E4, Bishop E2. Queen B6. The Polish is blitzing, right? He doesn't seem surprised by all this random stuff Magnus is doing. I think, I mean, there is no way Nepo knows this line. It just. It's just freestyling, yeah? Yeah, he's just freestyling, yeah. Now, Queen D2 looks normal, right? Um... Yeah. Because with the bishop here, usually I always try A3 and hope to trap this queen, but here it might just go away, no? Yeah, it might not work. But he played queen b3. I actually thought queen b3 might also be some sort of a move. But wasn't sure if takes and bishop c2 is annoying. But in fact, knight d2 defends everything yeah. nicely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm always so confused if black should take or not take. I think my instinct would be to not take and play h6 or whatever move. But aren't you worried that one day White will take this bishop? Yeah. That's why I'm playing h6 to, to run away. It's actually hugging. I can't take it right <laughs> now. Okay. I'll recapture. How bad is this? Yeah, but now White has bishops. I can, I know, castle or play king f1, king g2. I don't know. How scared do I have to be? <laughs> Maybe not scared at all, right? Looks solid, doesn't it? Yeah, it is solid. It is solid. Let's 
still very, very unusual position. I've thought about this move many a time because, of course, it would be a great shortcut after knight c3. You don't have to deal with dc, c5, bishop b4, whatever. But Doesn't I could never really find anything no, the CD to my liking there. C3, I can still go c5 with the Tarash. I can still go bishop b4 with the Ragozin. Okay, but c5 at least you can't. You can't go cd5, cd4, yeah? <laughs> So yeah, that's but right. I'm actually quite happy with okay. the other position, yeah, with CD5, ED5. I know, this is this is your stuff. This is my stuff, yes. Mm -hmm. In the old days, we were taught this is just bad for black, but these crazy kids and their crazy computers, they're revitalizing everything. Ah, this is an interesting line, yeah, so dangerous for both sides, it's beautiful. Ooh. Yeah. The chat is asking me about Arjuna Rigashi. I would of course like to take all the credit, but I don't think this would be fair. This uh, the boy is uh, is quite good. No, I think you deserve all the credit. Have you been working with him? Like, <laughs> uh, we we uh, we work when he has the time. But usually you're complaining that he's non-stop playing. So like he's just playing not... non-stop. Yeah, but every now and then, you know, he finds like three days between two tournaments and then he gives me a call and then we look at some position. Nice. He's a, he's a, he's a good kid. Yeah? And I, I like his chess. It's it's very, very quiet. Just seems he, strong. He just wins his games with sometimes without without much effort, it seems. Yeah, those are the best games. So in your kids' power rankings, I'm not sure, maybe you're also training all the other kids, but where where do they rank? Like up to Satorov, Gukesh, Pragnananda, um, Erigaisi, Keimer. What's the current power rankings? Okay, I just like Pragnananda and uh, Gukesh, I don't know at all. I mean, I saw Gukesh at the Olympics, of course, like everybody. Uh, and also, uh, after I learned his name, I saw his games at the Turkish League that followed. It seemed to me that he's um, he's probably less stable. I think he's definitely less stable than Arjun. But maybe he's also brilliant in some ways. Yeah. But they say that he is one of those players who tries to win every game. So every now and then he'll get badly burned. Yeah, like we also saw. And uh, and okay, Abdusatarov, he's of course very very good. And uh, and okay, there are some others also, yeah. There's some others up and coming. I mean, Hans is one of them, and uh, also Yakuboev and Sindarov, yeah. The other Uzbek players, uh, they're also rising very fast. This new generation is going to be stronger than the last generation. It looks like they're arriving, even rating wise. No, this might be one of the last super tournaments where we see all the names we're accustomed to. We have. We have Hans in it, of course, but it doesn't seem like it can be long until we have Eric Icy, Abdus Sator, or whoever, Gukesh, yeah. or a selection of them in every super tournament. No, like no I think by, by strength, they should already be in it. Yeah, they just didn't have the time no, to get this rating. I mean, I think that a lot of these guys, they are just playing their last super tournaments. Yeah, this, this new wave will replace them, will wash them away. Oof, that sounds grim. I think it's it's that's how the times work, right? Uh, the new new generation comes, and at some point there was this new generation of, uh, you know, Carlson, Caruana, Dingliren, and so on, yeah. yeah. And uh, the old guys, they they looked so strong, like Anand and Kramnik, but it didn't take it didn't take very long for us all to understand that the new generation is maybe a bit stronger, right? And the same thing will happen. That always happens, no? But it feels like it doesn't happen all the time, no? It's like every every 10, 12, 15 years we get a new generation because these guys, yeah, the names you mentioned, Levon, okay, he's a bit older, but he's also part of that generation. Levon, Carlson, <clears throat> Nepomneshi, Caruana, Ding, Ahmed Yarov, Wesley, MVL. They've been more or less Anish members of the top 10 for 10 years now, right? And not too many guys have broken into the club. And now it feels like there's at least five guys at least ready to join the party shortly. No? Yeah, maybe this is a new generation that is very special, right? Uh, maybe you're right. Yeah, maybe it's once 
uh, once in a while because the generation before that was uh, was already um yeah it's a big age gap no the generation before like Carlson and these guys are born in the 90s Vichy is mm -hmm. born in 69 Kramnik is 75 Gelfand is I think 69 Ivanchuk yeah. and so on so that's so uh, yeah a huge gap actually yeah there is a huge gap yeah maybe you're right but I, I'm pretty sure this new generation is is very special uh, it is I don't think it's it's worse than any other generation we had and also okay Vincent I think is part of this uh, of this brilliant generation yeah I think he is uh, he's also going to be really really strong yeah I think he's very strong as well we got a first row seat at the at the Olympiad he was very impressive like but all these kids, yeah, it's so hard to say who's the best because they all just keep, they all just keep rising. Do you have a theory why why it's happening now? Is it because of neural networks growing up with Leela, pandemic, a lot of time to study, like chess popularity in India, maybe Uzbekistan? So what's what's the reasons? Yeah, no, I think in Uzbekistan, um, okay, they got a bit lucky uh, uh, with my 2012 World Championship. So this sort of started this this huge interest, and and this wave is uh, is really well. These are the kids that were born around that time, right? Like Abdul Sattar was born, I think, two thousand five. Uh, so when when chess was uh, kind of really really booming, and uh, in India it seems there is this huge interest and huge support. All these kids have sponsorship, and they all train with Kramnik, you know, and. Uh, how does Kramnik do it? Like I know, right? <laughs> how many Indian kids and Ali Reza can you teach? <clears throat> and but also, I mean, there are also other countries. Yeah, like Iranian kids are very, very good. So like Maksud Lu is rising, and he's not the only one. And uh, um, and uh, there are still a, a lot, a lot of them that we haven't heard of. Yeah, that will be very, very strong three, four years down the road. And, and not that many of these names from good old Western Europe, I noticed, no? or in general from Europe. If you look at the Olympiad results, Europe really suffering. Is it? Yeah. Well, okay, it's one yeah. one Olympiad, right? Maybe we shouldn't read too much into the Olympiad. And also no, this Olympiad. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, no, I was just thinking yeah, that uh, a lot of it is, is fate, right? And uh, this top three was largely uh, made by Fabi. I don't know if you noticed, but Fabi lost three games and uh, basically three games that he lost, uh, these teams, they ended up, you know, first, second and third. Uh, so his shaky run on the first board more or less created the medals for others. And could also go the other way. I expected so much more from the Dutch team, for instance. I think the Dutch team is re is really very strong, yeah. And not to mention the German team, of course. Yeah, I'm happy to blame Fabi, but we also have some responsibility losing to Uzbekistan and to to the young Indian teams. But yeah. also, there were some other teams who played sensationally well, yeah? like for instance, Moldova finished like shared fourth, right? There's some some amazing results. Yeah, Lithuania. Yeah, Lithuania. Like Moldova beat Norway and England in a row, right? And also, what happened to to Norway when they like seeded third and finished fifties? Yeah, they we didn't see them much because there there were two playing holes and only the first twenty five boards were in the top mm -hmm. playing hole. So I'm not sure what what happened. From what I heard, is the team spirit was good. Magnus played well. Of course, one can be armchair psychologist that it's much more attention for the others than usual being in a team with Magnus but it's hard to hard to say what exactly happened another storyline or I don't know if it's a storyline but clearly there was some illness going around as well yeah I don't know if it was covert or not but many people in one big hall you could hear mm -hmm. quite quite some coughing especially during the last days and I think some key players for the U.S., I think Levon was sick, Paco Vallejo, he missed a couple of rounds mm -hmm. for the Netherlands. I think they had some guys who didn't play because of illness. So that might have been a factor as well. But overall, these guys are just incredibly good. No, there's India, two team, the Uzbek guys. Like it's not, it's not about the ratings, you could tell. The ratings will catch up, but the strength is already somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, they, they are very strong. Yes, and also um, probably in a playing hall where everybody is cuffing young players, they have even more advantage, right? Yeah. 
Could be, yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Anyway, any games that are sparking your interest? Well, Hans uh, Miner, he put his pawn on a5, so he's um, showing some ideas of the line, right? Maybe. Yeah. Here comes the A-pawn. Yeah, it's another big trend in modern chess. No? Push the A and H-pawn mm -hmm. whenever it's half legal. Yes, C6, bishop F4. Now his dream is to play queen D2, knight A4, and catch that rook, right? Unlikely, but a man has to have a dream. Yes. How should Levon play? Bishop G5. He tries to get rid of that guy. He's just got chase here. Yeah? Bishop G3, Bishop H4. But classically, this exchange should be a bit good for white, no? Queen D2 and... Uh... Uh, and then use these dark squares, right? Bring the knight to c5 or so. Yeah. At least I would take white if somebody gave me a choice. Mm. Hard to disagree. Levon playing quickly. He doesn't seem too concerned about it. But he's also one of these guys like Nepomneshi where... Playing quickly doesn't always mean he's happy or he's still in book. No, he can he can also bluff. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, with Levon, I've I've heard this. Yeah, that you you get this impression that his entire game is opening prep, but sometimes he just rides this wave of intuition. Yes, and yeah, and Nepo as well, of course. Yeah. All right. So Hans came with the prep. Ali Reza decided. Okay, Queen B three was fun while well, it lasted. It's time to go back home. Although, of course, night before will cost Fabi some tempi as well. I guess he'll argue. And now Bishop F5, how do you react? I would guess not Bishop F1, so my options are limited. No. <clears throat> Gotta yeah, go E4. E4 it's, a, it's a very boring symmetrical position, right? I don't know. I find it exciting. Do you give the bishop? Probably not, no? Yeah, no, I said bishop f5 confidently, but then I realized that g3, bishop g2 is probably good for white, right? Yeah, bishop exactly. F4 later on. And, uh, yeah. yeah, speaking of all the new giants, yeah, we should mention Alireza is not too old yet. Yeah? He's also definitely one of the new giants. Yeah, we, we haven't mentioned him because he's already, he's already there, yeah? He's 19 years old. And he's very much already part of the super tournament circuit. But yeah, it's true. He's not. He can't be his own generation. No, he does belong to this generation of new giants. Yeah, I still see him in a, in a junior rating list. Yeah, must must mean something. Very much so. Ali Reza and his compatriot MVL, they're also leading in the Grand Chess Tour this event. It's part of the Grand Chester, as was this last rapid event. I think it's the last event, as usual. Tremendously well informed. And it's close between them. Poor French guys looking at this. Imagine they had Maxime and Ali Reza at the Chess Olympiad. They, they could have played they, quite a role. They, no? they almost uh, fought for medals without both of them, right? They were exactly. up there the whole tournament and... Uh... Laurent Cassinet looking like he's 25 again. Jules Moussard, incredibly strong on the first board. Mm -hmm. So yeah, with these two guys on board three and four, as Laurent mentioned, that would have been tough. Yeah. D5, Fabi, not messing around. Yeah, Edie, how does this work? Sorry, what do you do? A3 or... I want a CD. I know I said ED. I wanted to take the pawn, but I said ED. It's not my pawns. Let's give them all. Ninety-five. It's you it's keep a taking it. To give, yeah. <laughs> Actually, we asked a question in the Chess Twenty Four chat. 
but it's more pleasurable to work with uh, some young guy and help him grow or with an esteemed 2750 player to help him become like a world champion? What do you think? I don't know. How many esteemed 2750 players are there that one can help to become world champion? No, in general, I think it helps working with Magnus because he usually wins and then you can get to take the credit. Also working with young guys, they will usually improve. And then you can yeah, also take the credit. So both improve. are both both safer bets than an esteemed 2750 player where, of course, improvement is much tougher if they're no longer young. Uh, now for me, working with Vichy was uh, in a way very successful. He was always winning. Yeah, but that's like, that's the pre-Carlson. Carlson, no? if you work with the best, then you have great chances of winning. But also you guys, of course, I think greatly contributed to Vichy becoming this match monster that he was, no, especially in 2008. Uh, well, but I think it was it was it was mainly uh, mainly Vichy because it was his his readiness to work and his uh, his quality standards that made us work like this. Like in previous times, I didn't even know that this sort of opening prep is possible. It's just it was not on my radar. I just didn't know it existed. This sort of depth and and, and coverage. Before before him, I used to work with with Morozovic, and this was a like a completely different thing. Hmm. This was a whole new level for me. More free flowing with Morozovic. Yeah, with Morozovic also sometimes you know he would go on month without looking at chess. Yeah, and uh, Vichy, I don't think he had a day in his life that he didn't look at chess. So this is ah, oh, there must have been some day. Huh? But also, it's not even it's not even always the organized work. No, I'm not sure with Vichy. I guess it's more organized. But with Magnus, you could get the impression that he doesn't look at chess much. But his head always does. No, I mean, even if he's playing football or I don't know what what he's doing, there's always something running, running up there. Mm -hmm. So I guess, I guess yeah. most chess players, like even you, I would argue, you would think about chess. In some way, every day, no, like uh -huh. I do. It doesn't help, but it's always there's some nonsense in the back of my head. But yeah, yeah. now when I was a professional player, definitely. But uh, but nowadays, uh, sometimes, um, yeah, I think about chess. Not always pleasant. Like last night, I had I had a chess dream, and uh, you probably have mm -hmm. a similar experience to me. Chess dreams are usually not fun. I don't have a lot of chess dreams. No, like. Um, in, my, in my chess dreams usually something goes wrong you know I make a move and suddenly a piece disappears you know it gets taken for no reason at all and uh... I, I don't need to dream that like check out, <laughs> check out my twitch stream it happens very regularly <laughs> hmm. have we figured out what to do after cd5 not quite have we well let's try yeah so knight fd5 uh -huh. Knight takes e5. Oh, and so uh, let's try knight takes c3, bc, bishop f6. Takes bishop e5. Rook b1, bishop c3, check. Bishop d2, queen Here takes d3. Takes, huh? Looks uh, simple and strong now. And now let's say CB and uh, uh, Rook before we have a check, maybe. Yeah, yeah I have a check. Looks like it's it's fine for so black. So we have to please. take, and mm -hmm. it should be whatever draw probably. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is Magnus the chess Sandman? What is that supposed to mean? Does he put us to sleep? I don't know. There's this new show called The Sandman, but I I haven't watched it and I don't know the lore. Yeah, it's supposed to be very good, but I saw the first five minutes and uh, somehow I just just couldn't couldn't keep on watching. Sorry to hear. Yeah, sometimes it happens. You know, the first five minutes they either make the show or break the show. Always happens with our attention spans. Can't spend half an hour checking out if something's good. Like <laughs> impress well, me in the first five minutes. There is a lot of stuff out there. No. So what else is there after d5? cd, knight fd5. 
Not so simple, actually. You have castles, maybe you just yeah, take and take. It's hanging, right? Yeah. And... So takes, you take with the queen. Yeah. yeah. What is this? Probably also fine for black somehow. Queen takes and just play the end game, no? Like bishop f6 and. Yeah, hard to believe. Yeah, white has also white is too happy. development issues, yeah. Oh, at 97. Oh, yes, even then takes rook d8 to my piece I'm going on. I lost so many blitz games against Fabi by giving him the center that I understood this is a bad strategy against him. Mm -hmm. Should play more classical chess, yeah, not this d3, g3. What happens if we go a3? Just go back, or is there wow. any Knight any nasty? Yeah. Or maybe even dc and then take cb has to be at least calculated. Looks fun. I'm not sure. This probably doesn't work right now. E4, but <laughs> 94 and not takes, takes queen d1, king d1, f6. Uh, the evaluation of this position is not immediately obvious to me. Interesting. Could be dead lost for white also. Wow, that's that's a strong statement. It could be. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It could, but it could be. It's a piece. <laughs> I, I have a lot of points. Let's check. I would say computer says plus zero fifty. There's no way it's a plus. Okay, let's let's find out. Wow, dead lost for white. You were right. My judgment is great. <laughs> Minus two. Oof. Minus two. Wow. Okay. Slightly off by one and a half points. <laughs> nice. So Ali Reza is in trouble? Well, maybe he can castle and uh, sort of pray. But then Fabi gets the center. Fabi gets the center and the better chances, yes. Question about Napo versus Ding predictions. We have, I don't know how many rounds this is, nine rounds. We have a lot of days and a lot of hours to talk about everything happening in chess. And beyond. And beyond. But yeah, you might as well tell us who's gonna win. Um I, I mean, is it politically correct to say I'm not interested? I could just feel it's a made up all championship match. Um, I don't know. I guess it's politically correct to say you're not interested. But it's just so made up. Yeah, it's just, it's just nothing world championship -y about it. It's a bit like Carp of Timman from 93, yeah, well, whenever they played. You know? Yeah, but there, Kasparov had like his own matches at the same time. No, now this is the only gig in town. And whether we we think it's real or not. I do you think the then the new guy will be hailed as a world champion? I don't know. Could be. Then maybe Magnus gets annoyed. We'll try to play the candidates tournament 2024. That's yeah. that's my my storyline for chess also, season how, three. What is Magnus going to do? Like he's definitely not going to play the candidates, he'll be out of the cycle. Why is he not gonna play the candidates? Because if he wants to play the candidates, why not play the World Championship match? I don't get it. But he doesn't like the stress of matches, no? But he likes tournaments. So he, he could play the candidates and then... And then qualify... Not, not, not play, play the, the match. match yeah? Sure. And then the, the second and third will play the match for the match, right? He could announce that maybe he's not going to play the match <laughs> unless Ali Reza finishes second, in which case he would play. <clears throat> no, I have no idea. Like... um. I'm also very curious how it's going to feel both for Magnus and for the the new world champion then with Magnus still being active and probably still being number one in the rating list. It's going to be weird. Yeah, also with this new generation coming, I don't know how long he'll stay number one. Hmm, that's an interesting question. What's the over-under? 
I mean, at some point, these guys will come to super tournaments, and then they'll have to play. He'll have to play them, yeah, and then he'll have to prove that he's better. And they will be younger, hungrier. They'll be younger, younger. yeah, and uh, also they're less impressed by by the top players, and top players would would have it believe. Yeah, I don't know. I still think well, Magnus not exactly old, and he's pretty good at chess. He's 31 i'm i'm not sure like also how his future plans are but i think in general he we can take it at face value what he said no that he will want to continue to play this 2900 goal i'm not sure he said one of his goals that he said was to reach 2900 it's just very unlikely to get there no like i've seen some some Honestly, I've seen a tweet, but the tweet was about a study saying that he had about 5% chance. So in the other 95% of cases, how long do you do you stay motivated? Is it just yeah, crushing people and not having to be involved in the world championship cycle? I, I find it very hard to, to figure well, out. Especially if you stop crushing people, right? Not always a given, right? This is... New generation seems to me that they can calculate. Wow, more shots fired. Are you saying Magnus can't calculate? No, I'm saying that uh, he can calculate definitely, but they are not worse at this. Yeah. Mm. And uh, unlike this generation that has been thoroughly beaten by Magnus and sort of is impressed, the new generation hasn't, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there might be some adjustment period, no, even for Magnus. He got crushed a bit by um, Vichy and the guys, but didn't last for that long, no? And for the other guys as well. Like yeah, I think so. Vichy, Vichy won the first four tournament games against Magnus. Yeah. Um, and then Magnus started winning, but Vichy remained a difficult opponent for, for Magnus, I think, for many years. Um, even the World Championship matches, they were they were closer than than we expected, right? Especially that one in Sochi. And um, yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting. Top chess and like, yeah, I don't think it's that far away. Well, next two year years maybe. like the or maybe already right, next year, mm -hmm. super tournaments will look will look very different or somewhat different. Hmm. What's going on here? Magnus got an endgame and Magnus got his bishops. It's probably happy, no? Should be four, also making sure these guys don't get exchanged very quickly. Yeah, and his pawn on b3 looks looks good to me. It's not very vulnerable, controls a lot of squares. As we know, a pawns control only one square, b pawns control two. Wow, I didn't know that <laughs> now that you mentioned it. <laughs> so one piece of chess wisdom I could share. Is it what you talk about that you, um, in your podcast? That's that's my main lesson. I'm trying to to sell it in as many places as possible, but yeah, we must have talked about this. That I think a pawns aren't full pawns. They're like they should be worth zero zero dot eighty if a pawn is one. No? They only cover one square, but you can always send it into attack. I think that's why these. Mm -hmm. Neural networks figure they're not that important. You don't need them to cover the king. They only covered one square anyway. We can send them. We can send them forward. Uh, with due respect, Ben Larson figured it out like sixty years ago. <laughs> that is fair, but people didn't believe him. He was ahead of his time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Especially after that match against Fisher, and yeah? somehow people didn't take him seriously anymore. Yeah, that happened. Not just to him. Hmm. Poor Taimanov, I'm sure. He never quite recovered in the chess world from that match, no? <laughs> well, but they say that Taimanov was like an extremely optimistic character in general. Yeah, yeah, that's true. 
you know, still living the life at, uh, at the ripe old age. Yeah. There's more questions about the match that you're not interested in. How much can World Championship match preparation add to player like Ding? I don't know. From the outside, it looks like Ding... I'm also not an expert on Chinese chess, but it looks like he does most of the work himself. No, some th things are really strange, like him showing up to the candidates one day before it starts with, I'm assuming, massive jet lag and going all by himself. Not sure how much COVID and um, politics played into that. But Ding having having a team and a structure, I, I'm sure it could benefit him quite a bit, maybe. If not for the match, then for the year after. Right? I think everybody could benefit from some work and from some structure, right? Mm -hmm. And Ding Liren is, is a mysterious player to me. I just don't know anything about him. Uh, except for his uh, amazing functionality at five o'clock in the morning Beijing time, and this is one thing which is uh, which is always a mystery to me. How do you do this so well? You know, when he plays this online uh, uh, tournaments and he plays against somebody like Magnus at five in the morning, I just wouldn't be able to function. But he's so good at this. It's a night owl. It's a normal time. But yeah, I guess. I guess you just, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> we don't know very much about Ding, do we? Like, I'm not sure if it's language, but he seems incredibly friendly and accessible, and he actually speaks decent English. Still, it feels like... Have you ever spoken to him? Um, No. No, me neither. So. But I've seen people speak to him. In, I mean, maybe this is an elite club. In Madrid. We do not belong in. <laughs> No, but he's so friendly. Like people come to him, ask for a picture and autographs, and he's just, just thoroughly nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's the way to his heart. Yeah, asking for an autograph. No, with with chess fans, <clears throat> like <clears throat> he was really, really friendly. <clears throat> I can't be a chess fan. Maybe can you? I don't I know. I can try. I'm not sure, I buy it. <laughs> Alireza took the other pawn, yeah? We somehow did not really analyze this. Knight takes e5. Why didn't we? This is the most natural move in position. Um, bishop d6. And in chess four point, is there? Chat, we have a user who, who spoke to Ding Liran. Zay Lanson talked to him. Yeah. Chase him in St. Louis in 2016. He was shocked to have a fan. It's all an act. It happens to him. 10 times a day, but he's so friendly that every time he yeah. will act to be genuinely shocked. And apparently Ding is a sweetheart. You the training camp with Ding and Magnus. Why are you lying, Mr. Gustafsson? I wasn't there at that training camp. Why would I lie about that? Uh, I know of that camp. I know of the legendary basketball matches. Ding and Peter Heine were dominating, but I wasn't there. Hmm. So ninety five. Let's try to figure it out. So if we take on c four, mm -hmm. he has to take with a pawn, right? With the knight looks wrong. Mm -hmm. So yeah, was it pawn? D four yeah? looks terrible as well. So yeah, pawn takes. So after queen d one, you will have to take with the king. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so now, looks forced. I mm, will have some tactics, yeah, like knight g4, oh, the tree of white. rook d8, yeah. Looks like right up Fabi Zelli, no? Calculate mm -hmm. deeply here. Let him calculate. Speaking of calculating, I calculated I should hit the bathroom within the next two minutes. So I'll do it right now and be right back. Apologies. I'll be here.
gains that confidence. Uh, plays a few uh, good events. Stops looking inwards into his own insecurities. I like the no expectation part. So like that's something that has gotten better because sure, it's like not my full time job. It's definitely good for chess in India. And now there is Olympiad also. So there'll be more people following and mm -hmm. taking up chess as professional sport. Yeah. And it's surprisingly concrete still, no? Like, yeah. he takes d4, good move, this d takes d4, this d takes d5. This line was essential and forced, but uh, also not uh, rocket science to map out. Played the Berlin, which I sort of expected, but I didn't really know what to do against, because in reality, very few people do. When we are playing a, an even game against someone of similar strength to us, usually we need to give something in order to obtain the initiative. Just how shrewd and cunning Ali Reza can be, even with. Uh, very little time. I want to show you a game just to prove that I play these lines. I played against former world number two and a bit of a superstar, Gata Kamsky. Queen H5 check with a double attack. Attack the king and attack the pawn. And you thought, no, can't have that. I don't want the double attack. And so, with this very good insight, you chose the move G5, trying to block the queen's access. E5, it's E5, Patsers. A complete repertoire against 1E4, based on 1E5, now available to study with Chessable's unique move trainer technology. The backbone is the Marshal Gambit against the Spanish, with three Knight F6 against the Italian. Jan Gustafsson has revisited all these lines he has played for 20 years and worked on as a second for Peter Lecco and Magnus Carlsen, amongst others, with the help of the most powerful engines out there, Leela Zero and Stockfish 10. This has led to many new discoveries and a repertoire ready to master on chessable that can serve the student for a long chess career. Maybe E4 doesn't exist after all. E5, it's E5, Patsers. I'm in Barcelona for my first chessable course, and what do I do on a Friday night? Go play chess. It was a great place, Armando's Bar, and after playing some fun blitz games, it was blindfold, it was team chess, it was helping out a rookie who showed up, it was everything, lots of fun, after midnight, in fact. I got a chance to show this puzzle, one of my favorite creations, to the group. To Someone proposed D6 check right away, moment, this is a very important move, it is white to move and win, so D6 is an aggressive looking move, king back to D8. But this is where the puzzle really starts. And you have to have some serious geometric vision to solve this one. Now this next move is from outer space. You have to look. And we're back. Wow, Maurice Ashley has, has big arms. Do you see those? No. Okay, I was watching the clip. That was impressive. Um, let's... Which position shall we look at? Maybe we can uh, see Linier's game or Mamiziara, who haven't been there for a while. Oh, look what Wesley played. King of eight. 
You did tell me, right? I did tell you. Yes. <clears throat> it's still in book. Should be five. A6 takes, takes. So Mohamed Yarov gave the bishop to, to avoid any d4 shenanigans. But without the bishop, how much can he hope for? Well, Mohamed Yarov is pretty good. He's very good. Hmm. Maybe he can just, you know, take on b6, play knight d4, and claim that he has a, an easier position. Then g5, bishop b4. Yeah, I'm not Close sure. Whose position is easier now? But I'll cut your rook, yeah? g5, bishop g3. Uh, that'd be unfortunate. Bishop b4, knight a4. Uh, rook. But you can't play bishop d2, knight b6, and rook c1. <laughs> yeah. Bailing and at out. the end of it, you'll be happy. Yep. No. I can I can try I can trap your bishop yeah rook c1 even here bishop e5 I'll try oh bishop you'll probably succeed although I don't see how yet knight g4 knight you'll g4. trap my knight yeah well I don't know I mean the knight e6 <laughs> takes bishop c3 now both your pieces are in some danger <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, this is. I'm scared. We'll see. You can shuffle your knight around. <laughs> yeah, no, he you, you look in trouble. But he he kept yeah. his queen. Played queen d three. Still looking for a move here. Not so easy apparently. Yeah, he. I think you should look earlier. Oof. Queen d three. Okay. Oh, so this doesn't really look equal to me. Yeah, g5 feels feels rough with the king. Yeah, Should yeah, be... yeah. g5 doesn't feel safe. This guy will be here quickly. Now, Yarov, he keeps finding ways. It's these positions. It's it's all zero zero with Mister Computer, but over the board they get in trouble quite yeah, a bit. I'm not sure if he's in trouble here, but I don't think you would feel safe against my Yarov here. Then again, where would I feel safe against one of your probably somewhere yeah. away from the chessboard? I know he looks pretty strong as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is no way to run, can't hide. Yeah, my yard will keep grinding, and he's he's excellent in these d4 positions with some small mm -hmm. tactics here and there. Dominguez, I don't know, feels like it's on sport almost, these, these Lanier MVL Nidorfs. MVL sort of stabilized, but had to put his king here. Should be five provokes b6. I wouldn't be happy with white here against Maxime. White has an hour more on the clock. Still so wouldn't be happy. You gotta catch him in the opening. You can't just have him spend time. Um yeah. Now rook c3 looks very natural, but I don't see what to do after queen a7 or queen b7, yeah. Yeah. Queen B7, knight A5 might pose some problems. Oh. But maybe Queen A7 is very safe. Looks fine, doesn't it? Yeah, D5 will happen one day, yeah? Black bones will start rolling. Maybe it's not Rook C3, yeah? Maybe we need to look for something brilliant. But what? This pawn is also hanging, so... Yeah, bishop g5 runs into possible knight jumps, right? Knight g4, knight e4. Huh? So 
so not ideal. Yeah, I don't know. Rook C3 does look very natural, but after Queen A7, we need to find a follow up. Yeah. He can play some move, but it doesn't look very convincing. No, everything's covered. No. As you mentioned, d5 is coming. This is good news for Maxim. Well, Maxim likes his pawns a lot. Um... Yeah, he also does like bishops. Doesn't have those. Yeah, That's but he usually gets an awful position in the opening and has nothing to show for it. Now he has a pawn. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Maxime seems to be in good shape. Not sure if he's better, but it looks like a good outcome. Knight takes e5, d takes c, d takes c played here. Bobby, he's not like Levon or Nepomnish. He won't blitz out his moves. He will he will diligently sit there and think. So isn't it weird? Yeah, there is a getting dangerous positions with white and move like eight. He's asking for it, no? He wants to play a game so badly. He's willing to mix it. Yeah. Knight before d5 probably was very strong. Yeah? Just not letting white get away with playing a slow positional game. Yeah. And now we should just see if black has something very strong, right? He didn't take on d1 yet, did he? No. Uh -huh. no. He also queen c7 also queens, looks like a move. Yeah, queen c7 yeah. and rook d8. Yeah, these guys are coming quickly. So I play f4 here? f4 looks almost necessary, right? Because yeah. you don't want to go back. Rook d8 and queen e2. No. Yeah, I'm, I don't see it yet. <clears throat> Knight g4, what happens? You take? Yeah, I thought even if I take twice, yeah, what do you do? Yeah, it's not enough. <clears throat> yeah, this knight on a1 is, is not going to be a great piece, right? Yeah, this doesn't look great. Of course, knight g4, not exactly forced. But you but isn't time? Play. Yeah, but should have five, maybe you have e4. <laughs> but even in the position now, yeah, you could play knight g4 in the position that they have. Hmm. Could be confusing. Kinky. Are you confused? I'm a little confused. You see? Or do, do I take it? Yeah, take. I thought bishop g4. Ah, directly. Well, I thought of this line, yeah, bishop g4. And if queen g4, then I have uh, queen d3. Mm -hmm. And I have some evil intentions. I can see your intentions. Just to know if I can stop them. How is this? Yeah, but maybe this is uh, maybe this is just, just uh, showing off for no good reason, yeah? This looks bad for black. Yeah. Knight d5, and you're dominating. So maybe I should take mm -hmm. on d1, should take on g4, right, instead. It's f3. White is losing a lot of time, not even bishop e6. Yeah, bishop e6, well, will, you, will you play b3? Uh, not happily. It's shaky, huh? it's shaky, it's risky. Looks like something bad could happen. Though. Yeah, and then b5, c4 even, yeah, instead of rook d8 also, yeah. That could be could be just uh, sort of, could be bad for white, right? Yeah, scary. So what else is there? Knight g4? We could take on d8, but that doesn't help. 
the state of things just makes it worse. Mm. So we have to take takes 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 f3 very much. Can you go king d2? Is that king d2 might be madness? Possible. And then rook d8, knight d5, uh, trying to bail out into something. Yeah. Yeah, if black has something convincing, then this is maybe not it, yeah? If black has more than this. Yeah, I guess even here black is in time to create enough play for whatever equality, but... Yeah, but not for an not advantage. Not straightforward, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So we can expect a long Fabi think? Um, yeah. This is, I think, a really important tournament for him, right? After the disastrous uh, end of the candidates and uh, shaky Olympiad, he kind of he needs to get his mojo back, right? Yeah. Also, looking at his rating, it's still a fine rating, but at some point he was about to drop out of the top ten. While well, he, in my head, he's still world number two. So to see him there at nine or ten is sort of shocking. Oh right? well, yeah. I think this is an important tournament. Yeah, if he doesn't uh, doesn't have a good result here, I think his uh, his future in chess might not be so rosy. He'll be all right, but yeah. Yeah, but he'll be all yeah. right either way, right? Yeah, yeah of course. Like what could possibly happen to him? Does he still have this Whole Foods downstairs of his apartment? Like that? I try not to think about what he has these days. Yeah. All right. He has to make a move. Uh, okay, it seems like uh, he'll be fine today. What about Nepomnashi? I'd like to exchange these bishops. Doesn't look like it's a big priority for him since he just played a6. Yeah, maybe he wasn't sure. Like if he plays bishop d6? Maybe white can take, take, play g5, and play f4. This is this knight on h5? I'm not sure. It's a, it's a good piece. So all these knights don't really have squares, right? <clears throat> yeah, f even now, f4, and then h5. Can't be too terrible, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe there is no counterplay for black. A6 is useful, so yes, C5 down the stretch in these mm -hmm. types of positions. Yeah. Maybe I can even play B4 after A6, stop your C5 business. Yeah, yeah no, I meant that's why. Maybe mm -hmm. he started with A6 just to have. I think maybe he wants to go C5 without having to go Bishop D6. Apparently. Keep his Bishop alive. Can't do it yet. Can't do it yet. What's the verdict? We think it's equal. We think white has a little something. And why white has a little something? Mm -hmm. White can also play maybe rook a4, force the bishop to, to make this decision. Yeah, now take and, and g5. Yeah, if this structure is indeed something for white, maybe black can try to reroute his knight to e7, yeah, knight g8, e7. G5, maybe we could take. No, no. G5 now with the rook on A4. Yeah, this pawn is actually hanging now. Yeah. So rook A4 does have these advantages too. Castle mm -hmm. just played king G2. Well, he saw this line. He decided to give this rook on H1 some protection. Smart. And also, he likes his bishops. No, maybe he just wants to drop back after bishop t6. But... Not sure. Could be. Yeah, it's one of those positions where uh, um, if you play against Magnus's block, you sort of feel long-term pressure, yeah? That if something will go wrong, then his, his bishops will be there for a long time. Yeah. Well, that's why I, I like bishop t6, just to make sure to get it. No, it might be equal, but Magnus not unhappy here. It's 
speaking of not unhappy, Hans also not unhappy, no? Yeah, I'm. It looks like like a dream anti Berlin for what, right? And I yeah. have to C five. Looks very unpleasant, actually. Yeah, maybe maybe knight d seven and then try to just sit it out. You know, rook e three and then rook. Let's say a eight. Rook e one. Just feels like long term suffering as well. We yeah, no, do. he's suffering. Yeah. Why does a million decent moves he can make on mm -hmm. c three? Bishop d three or some pawn. I is suffering. Yeah. Hans crushing the Berlin. A4, ladies and gentlemen. What's the computer line here? Is it A6? No, it's Bishop E7 directly. Yeah, I was a bit surprised he was A6. Maybe Levon mix something up because now he can take and take D5. Yeah, but I think it's uh, Bishop E7 something else. Yeah, Knight C3. Yeah, yeah, Knight C3. Or... No, I'm just checking what Compi wants. Wants this. Mm -hmm. Yes, sort of similar to the game, but maybe better version for Black. Black can play d4 here, for example. Interesting. But it felt like maybe Levon wasn't exactly sure with his ace, a4 move what to do. And then he blitzed out a bunch of moves quickly, but I got into some trouble. Huh? It's a drawback of the style of blitzing out moves. Sometimes you get into some trouble if you're surprised. Well, but then at least you have some time on, uh, on the clock, but his position does seem unpleasant. Yeah. Let's check what the computer says about Magnus. Here, yeah. Rook A, D8. It says what is better. 0, 44. And indeed, keeping the bishop. This will be a long session. Yeah. Also, not a dream position for Nepomnish, you know, whose strength is his very, very fast calculation, feel for initiative and all that here. Oh. But we did see also some, some serious uh, defensive skills, right, at the last candidates. Yeah. Uh, some positions I really expected him to lose, and he just didn't. No, agreed. Sometimes it was more of a direct crisis there, you no? Know, like against Fabi, okay, if he survives a couple moves, he'll be fine. Yeah, but it really um, looked like nobody should survive this this couple of moves, right? Yeah, yeah, very much so. But here it's not about not about move by move, no, it's just Magnus gonna sit there, shuffle his piece around, you have to calculate which pawn breaks come. Won't be fun. Also, probably, um, I mean, Jan probably still carries yeah, a certain amount of pain after this match that they played. Sure. Probably was quite happy. Not having to see. See the guy in the candidates here? Like, if mm -hmm. you see your nemesis stuff. Okay, D8. Magnus thinking. Yeah, we'll we're in for a long, for a long night here. How's your daily routine? Is it fine for you to do commentary from eight p.m. till one a.m.? We'll find out. But usually, you're you get your life together. No, you probably go to bed early, like well, I'm midnight a, or something. No? I'm a family man. Yeah. So am I, I but like when the family is sleeping, like I, I jump into the basement and. <laughs> uh, what you get your post podcast organized huh? <laughs> podcast only once per week but yeah streaming also whatever work I'm supposed to be doing it's easier once the kids are sleeping so mm -hmm. for me being a family man hasn't really fixed my sleeping schedule that much no I mean for me it's I, I'm not a night person at all mm -hmm. and if I'm uh, up at night then it's only because um I'm sleepless, uh, which unfortunately happens. Sorry. What to do? Some rough chest stream woke you up? Ah, sometimes, you know. I'm also getting getting old, getting a bit more nervous yeah, than I would like to be. Tell me about it. Takes, takes. 
So how did you feel about the Uzbeks winning the Olympiad? Was were you happy. were you just uh, happy and proud? Do you think Ugh, I should have been a part of this? No, no, no. I think one of the reasons they won is because I wasn't a part of this. I just think at some point you need to admit, yeah, there are people who do it better. And not only that they do it better, yeah, I might still uh, make the top five in Uzbekistan. I actually uh, do, but uh, but they also like doing this. They like playing chess. They like fighting. They like uh, have the tension, you know, and I just kind of don't anymore. Who do you think is better, Vakhidov or Vokhidov? I think they're both pretty decent. They both crushed Port Four, no? Like, <laughs> yes. But this guy Vakhidov is not as young as the others, no? Like he was the big surprise with the with the young guys. Of course, well, you he, can feel the is, potential, but he's like twenty seven. He was he was he was always a good player, but he was one of those uh, players who every now and then did absolutely crazy things. Like, you know, you would play him and he would play a great game and then he would wander a piece, you know? Sometimes it would happen to him. And he he showed his usual level, but without any of this sudden blundering. So probably something he got he got right. Yeah, maybe his physical preparation was good this time or something he, he really he really nailed this time. I was very impressed. Yeah. No, all the guys just seem very strong. This guy Vokhidov, he doesn't play so much in the crucial matches, but he's also very young, no? Very strong blitz player. Let's I think hear he's, more he's, of him he's, too. he's around 20. He's a hard-working, very, deal, very diligent fellow. Uh, he, he reminds me a bit of, of Lenier, you know, this kind of steady approach to chess. Uh, maybe not a genius, but, uh, but just a really good player. How many inhabitants does Uzbekistan have? I think 30 and something million. 30 something million. Uh -huh. So fewer than India, more than Armenia. Just by chess powers. Armenia, I'm always very impressed with. Sorry, we keep talking about the the Olympiad. But they played without Levon. They played without their number two and three players on the rating list as well. And they're still just more or less crushing the field, just up there the whole time. How do they do it? In fact, I think it was even more impressive than, than Uzbekistan's performance because... Uh... I think they, they overperformed even more greatly, right? Yeah. And they're not all 17, yes? So it's just when, when it's Armenia, like... Um, but it was like uh, the same business. old story, right? It happens at every Olympiad. In the in decisive moment, Sargisyan just kind of gets it together, you know, and starts winning every game. We've yeah, that Sargisyan is a 2 eight fifty player when he plays for Armenia. We've sort of grown accustomed to it, yeah? but also everybody else is just... I want to know the secret because it's so consistent. Yeah, it doesn't matter who plays; they're always up there. Yeah, maybe maybe they're just really good players, but they just need this extra bit of motivation that they really feel. Do you think European players might be overrated, or is that a bit a small sample size theater? Because I think it's just small, small sample size. Because I do think that, for instance, that Germany has a phenomenally talented and strong team. I think so too. <clears throat> and uh, as I said, the Dutch as well. Yeah, when you have uh, you know a guy like uh, like Vamadam on board four or five, you know, it must be a very very strong team that could easily get medals. I was actually very afraid of this match of Uzbekistan against Netherlands in the last round. I thought this is uh, like a really dangerous thing for us. Uh, with Jordan, uh, with White, and uh, you know Anish Stable on board one, and uh, it also looked very dangerous for us, but then it worked out. How was it in the end? Two and a half, yeah. Like it was two uh, and a half. You won on portfolio. Yeah, yeah Jahangir won with Black against uh, against Vamadam. He just took his pawns and then converted, you know, meticulously. Yeah. No, everybody. Just, just in great shape here. Yeah? Like, yeah, this happens sometimes. Sometimes yeah, it, it happens here. Yeah, this match <laughs> reminded me a bit of Porto Caras 2011. Yeah, when everybody in the German team, you included, was just in good shape, right? And uh, everybody gained rating. This was one of those cases. Yeah. Yeah. No, sometimes it happens. It's very hard to pinpoint mm -hmm. why it happens or how it happens. Yeah, maybe it's just it's just random as well. But of course, with these Uzbeks being so young and the Indian guys being so young. Although India too, I don't think anybody was surprised to see them well, fighting think, for the medals. 
So what's clear. surprising is that they got Arjun into the wrong team, right? Yeah. I mean, Arjun Everybody said that now, put Arjun on that team, like, and have the kids team. That'd be... Although they are... Their board four also did great, no? I mean, it was... <laughs> Yeah, Sad yeah, Sadvani, who also seems like a very strong young player, they do seem him to have an abundance of talents. But of course, if you they have, they have a lot, if you of put the beast players. on the first team or whatever you want to call the teams, and then all the kids on the second team would have been even cleaner. Yeah, these two. Generations. Yeah, no, but actually, I thought this was this was sort of by the lineup. I thought they had you know India old and India junior team. Yeah, but, yeah, but then you just switch later. Adiban with Team Two, no? But <laughs> yeah, but they just—they told me later they just went by by rating. Yeah, thanks. They just went by rating, and this was the rating of, ratings at the moment. I think it would be just so much cooler to have a full junior team of India. I think that team would be very difficult to stop. Even to stop this team, yeah, one needed all the luck in the world. And... Yeah. Oh, if Gukesh wins his first games on board. His first eight games on board one doesn't make them weaker. <laughs> anyway, enough Olympia talk. What's Wesley so up to? Uh, he he was the only G5. steady guy at the Olympics for, for the US. He went for G594. Probably for lack of better ideas. Maybe it works, but it's very, very risky, no? Um, but was it necessary to play bishop e5? There were so many tempting moves, right? Like, can I attack this rook? Knight d4. You just take knight. You just take on c3, right? With the rook or with, with the, bishop, the bishop? I thought. Yeah. Yep. And you find, you know, so yeah, bishop e5, knight e4. Now it looks like Wesley will manage to exchange quite a few pieces. Wiggling out. What does white do actually? Do you have Rooks to play Roxy too? It's an ugly move. Yeah. Bit awkward, yeah. But, uh... White is still very stable. But... Difficult position to calculate, like maybe queen a5. Mm -hmm. uh, but then knight d4. Yeah, maybe black should take on c3 first, right? Uh... Bishop c3 and uh, pawn takes bishop f5. Can I do this? No, can take. And now I thought maybe the knight jumps, like knight f6. Or I could also get mated, yeah. Bishop c2. How does this play out? 95? Probably doesn't play out well, right? Some threats. Yeah, yeah very serious threats. And you find threats like this. Queen c7? Yeah, <laughs> not sure it's But me. then just knight but... c6, right? Bishop d1. And... Uh... Yeah, we should finish this line very soon, yeah? otherwise we'll lose all <laughs> yeah. our viewership. Nah, the three of them are fine. Get some coffee. No, but I have like a lot of viewers uh, there, although the chat like at some point went in completely wrong directions. Ooh. Yeah. But at some point they should, they should be back with chess and related topics. Mm. I don't make any progress in this line. So Are you takes, still, takes. You still on that? Yeah? I'm still, still <laughs> staring at the board. 97, rook d8. <laughs> Maybe some white is out of yeah. trouble. Well, 97, rook d8, you can go 9, g6 check, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. But also... I, if I don't go rook d8, then you can at least take the bishop, right? This is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was. That was the dream. You have very modest dreams, my friend. Told you, no chess in my dreams. 
All right, so Wesley should be doing okay. Fabi, as expected, he's taking all his time to, to calculate his position. What about bishop d6? Does it take the horsey? No, Got it three. Horsey. Yeah, I thought I would take on e5. Take, take on d4. And um, I don't know what this is. Me neither. Lately, at least it looks remotely stable for white, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Bishop G4, you'll just go King C2, right? And... Yeah. Mm -hmm. A5, I don't know what this position is. Probably. Oh, sorry. Probably playable for, for both, right? Yeah, no clue. F4. Yeah, Doesn't just, look too bad for what? <laughs> yeah, I did just the difficult position on the home. Mm -hmm. Probably spending a lot of time here. Do you believe in this theory, which I also learned from the from the Magnus podcast that in chess there are two types of players, players who calculate deeply long variations and players that calculate short variations and that Fabi is a deep long calculator therefore maybe he needs more time or he's better in classical think that such Isn't a thing he like, wasn't he like number one rated blitz player just three months ago I think he's still very high up there so it's always a bit unclear how much we can keep up that narrative yeah, no, I, I actually often feel this, that the form in Blitz and Classical, they are not parallel. So very often, if you're playing well in Blitz, sometimes it, it affects your Classical and the other way around. But in fact, of course, he's a very, very good calculator. Um, yeah, that's what he does best. But he also seems to do fine um, intuitively. So you don't think there's like two two types necessarily? He's I, number three in the world in Blitz. Corona, 2846. Not terrible. Yeah. He played knight g4, right? Uh, yep. Takes. Bishop takes. We looked at this, no? We thought king d2. Yeah, yeah. You said king d2 and white gets some stability. And that, that seemed right. King d2 is, of course, a difficult move to, to play. But once you come up with it, then okay. and you do it, right? Yeah, also. White only has two moves that make any sense now and to calculate that f3 is dangerous because of check bishop e6 early reason. Yeah, king d2 we'll probably do by it. 5 looks much more stable. I wonder what so the point is. Uh, rook a d8, for instance, knight d5, b5. Hmm. And then a3, for instance, right? Yep. With a position which is difficult to evaluate, then knight d5, for instance, at the end. Cd c4, yeah. I don't know what that is. Me neither. We're up a pawn, but you'll do unpleasant things, no? <laughs> yeah, this is one, one thing in this position. I wouldn't be surprised if white is doing badly. I'll say plus zero dot five. Wow. Oh no, this time white is better. Oh wow. Does that surprise me? No? Apparently. Mm -hmm. We get out. Let's see what Compoy has to say. Yeah, he played King Vito, yeah. So if black had some sort of a decisive continuation, this is probably not it, right? No, but it gives us line. No, it just takes mm -hmm. and e4, f5, and enough counterplay, which looks believable, actually. But not very ambitious for black, right? Black is not I guess it's really winning fun. this. Yeah. Bishop e3, and we exchange everything, right? Yeah, might peter out. 
chat is saying Ali Reza is very tricky. That's true. I'm not sure if this is about being tricky. No, this is just raw calculation, which they're probably both ex excellent at. Yeah. What else do we have? We have Hans oh, uh, torturing. This is this is very serious suffering, right? Uh, he goes queen e1, and black will not be able to move a muscle. No. Don't move. C3, and he can decide to when, mm -hmm. when and if he wants to go for end games or pushing pawns. Yeah, very soon black will only be able to move his king, right? Yeah. He has to sit there and wait for Hans to, mm -hmm. to do something. Yeah, it's a nice position to get in the first round of... Or any it's round. Well, any round, yes. You don't know what to do against the Berlin. Learn from Niemann. Play A4. Don't add me if you don't win after Bishop E7. So there's that. Magnus still chipping away. Still got his bishops. Yeah, bishop b8. I guess hinting at some stuff like this, but it doesn't look like black has a lot of great sources of play, no? No, I think it's more about uh, where white will break through, right? Yeah, he's gonna do. He's gonna do Magnus stuff, no? Like, I put Dominguez, he's still thinking. Yeah, we left him there about an hour ago. He's still thinking. He's unhappy. Out of book, pawn down. Computer says he's much better, but he doesn't know. Bishop G5, computer really likes what? Yeah, no, we mentioned the knight jumps. Uh, uh, they didn't look convincing, the knight jumps, right? Knight E4, for instance. Maybe this is just a bad idea, yeah, right? It just Bishop. doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just positionally awful, right? Uh, yeah, this is just positionally awful. And if bishop g5, black plays like d5? Yeah, apparently it's just, yeah. just unpleasant. Yeah. Okay. I still believe it. That Max seems happy here. Linear taking a lot of time. Passport saying is A4 not a one game weapon though? What's not a one game weapon against the Berlin? Pretty sure black holes both sides play perfect. Yeah. No, I think nowadays. Um... We need to acknowledge, right? One game ideas are all you can ever get. So there is just a draw if you look at any position in any major opening long enough. So you need to do something for a game. Yeah. It's different than in the old days, no? When, of course, Kasparov had lots of ideas, but you could also play a certain complex or a certain line where you just knew more, more than once and get wins or good position out of it. Yeah. Nowadays... At the press of the button, everything's there. Now, analysis was, of course, very, very different in pre-computer pre days. Yeah, and even in pre-neural networks days, I would argue, like it's it's changed again. No, with with Team Leela and uh, now Stockfish, whatever the latest version is, fifteen. Yeah, I don't know. I never yeah. used Leela, so difficult for me to. Wow, lies, ladies and gentlemen. No, lies. <laughs> Leela was never high on my. Uh -huh. On my list, mm -hmm. Fabio would sometimes use Lila, but surely for psychological reasons, because Lila would show that Black is doing fine in in whatever shady line we try it, yeah? so just to be kind of to feel better before the game. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Angel's stronger now, so most games for White. Okay, guys are more flexible. Yeah, I mean, you can play different different things. It's unlikely your opponent will know everything or expect everything of the many things you could do. 
but it's not like you can have a repertoire and expect to just put pressure with white by following it. Yeah, no, but with a lot of very strong guys these days, I don't have the feeling that they're necessarily well prepared. They just play something. No, yeah, they just play something. They just seem really good to, uh, in actually playing chess. Yeah, it's very unfair. I know, right? The uh, one skill I had to be able to to prepare well gets taken away, and you need to play well now. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Mickey well, Adams once once told me, yeah, if you're a chess player, then you should be ready to play chess every now and then. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Right? <laughs> so you work on chess to avoid having to play chess. <laughs> yeah. I actually like working with uh, with the new generation. Sometimes uh, you know you can just make them happy by solving uh, tactics together for five hours. I don't think I could make you happy like this, could I? It depends. Like, uh, who gets paid for it? You get paid or I get paid? Like, uh, you you pay me, of course. Now yeah. then, that won't be that <laughs> happy. <laughs> well, now this, as far as I understand, you have you have two principal choices. Yeah, you either pay me for solving tactics or Kramnik. Those are my options. Those are your options. Yeah. <laughs> Kramnik will show you Queen B three on move five, and I will solve tactics with you. So. Oh. Choose a way. <laughs> no, maybe it's not all roses to be a chess <laughs> prodigy. <laughs> like before, queen goes back. And this didn't happen yet. After king d2, Pau is still thinking. Yeah, I wonder how happy he is. Yeah? Because he will feel a bit of pressure here. Having less time, having um, still a pawn down, right? He needs to to show a clean solution now. Yeah, to equalize whatever this line was looked fairly fairly clean, but it's maybe also not the first thing that comes to mind. No, like oh, also after e four, you can also abandon the calculation. Yeah, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. You have to see this. He'll find a way, though. Hard to believe. Are we getting in trouble here? He'll be fine. Yeah. But this move, just for, just for fun. Now he gave the check. Ninety-five will happen. And then we'll see. Which direction he chooses. Maybe he has not so much choice, right? Uh, no, B5, what do we say? A3. Take, take, and then also here, right? Bishop E6 should be very similar. E4, Same right? idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the chat says Ronaldo much better, much better than who? Much better than what? Ah, oh, they had they had football talk now. I would guess so. Ronaldo's yeah. not playing, right? <laughs> yeah, it's him. Yeah. Unless Hans Niemann's new nickname is Ronaldo, which I haven't heard at least. Levon is, is really crawling, right? What can he do? He still can't move anything, no? Like, unless he, well, wants, he to wants to go bishop go f5. F he wants to go knight f8, bishop c8. And if white plays queen h4? Mm-hmm. Isn't this the situation where you bring Harry? But then knight f8, bishop c8 looks really so stable. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yep. Another problem with these top players, they're not so easy to beat, even if you get a, a get a good position, no? Yes. No, this is 
Is this true? Let's see. How compy does it? No, nothing direct. Just some random computer moves. No. No direct inroads. Yeah, maybe they don't exist. Hmm. Yeah, beating a top player is always is always a difficult thing. Much easier to lose against a top player. That's very, very simple. <laughs> Magnus is shuffling. Should be eight, knight a four. I guess he was hoping for some bishop a seven, b four, knight c five business. Yeah? This guy went back. Not clear what the knight is doing on a four now. Maybe I'll sit back. Yeah, it will probably go back, and after bishop b eight, he will look for new solutions. So oh, here we got a serious Messi Ronaldo discussion. Uh -huh. hmm. Nobody mentioning Jürgen Kohler, um, but Mateus is being mentioned. Ah, Laura, of course, Andy Bremer. Bishop E1, he really wants his pawn on B4. Uh, yeah, Bishop E1 is a nice little move, right? Yeah. B4, Knight C5, and uh, the torture continues. Yeah. It's time to try to bail out, or am I just losing material? It's not really a bailout element. Hard yeah, to I do wonder. nothing. It doesn't seem to be anything tactically wrong with it, right? At least I don't see it. Me neither. Bishop a5 is just a shot in the dark. <clears throat> yeah, Bishop a5, I can even start sacrificing the exchange, yeah, CD and counterplay. Ah, I forgot. You mm -hmm. hate rooks. I haven't been here for a while. But this looks like Black made some progress somehow, doesn't it? I mean, it might still be worse. Mm -hmm. but, uh... Maybe now after bishop c5, maybe bishop a5, and uh, okay, rook, rook c8. No bishop e3 here? This looked less convincing, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look so terrible for Black. Yeah, it looks like he might be able to survive this. I think he needs to go c5, yeah. Otherwise, after b4, it will be like, like, uh, like Nima Naronian, yeah. Yeah. But he probably will if it's possible. No, like, uh, well, apparently it's bad. Just bad positionally. Compi is just happy here. And then he just wants to go B4, B5, yeah. Mm -hmm. So probably is suffering. Passport is saying Jürgen Kohler was the right back, Andy Bremer was the left back. No, Andy Bremer was a midfielder, famous for scoring the decisive penalty in the 1990 World Championship match against the penalty killer, Gojko Echea. But Andy came through. That is correct, yes. That's where, that's the end of my football knowledge. Yeah. No, I, I, I remember that day. I was rooting for Argentina. Wow. But I was a kid in Uzbekistan. Uh, this was a tough night. Sorry. Yeah. 
And Argentina won in 86, no? So you had a you had a good night then as an Uzbek kid. I was seven years old. <laughs> Still won. Uh, 86, I, 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 I do not remember with any clarity. Me neither. 88 is the first one I followed. 88 was the Soviet Union, right? Uh, winning. They, they made the finals. No, they lost to the Netherlands. Ah, they lost. Yeah, they didn't win. Yeah, they lost. Netherlands beat us in the semi-finals. It was heartbreaking. But this was the golden team, right? With Gullit and Van Basten and whatnot. Yeah. Frank Reichardt. Mm -hmm. Ronald Koeman. Okay, we're old. Um... Oh, we're not getting younger. Every day. Bishop E6 played by Fabi. How many soccer players do you think Fabi can name? Uh, probably some, no? Like... He will know Cristiano and Messi. Ah, after that, not confidently. You don't think he knows Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi? No, of course he does. Not confidently, no. He's hanging out on the internet all day. There will be some memes. Yeah, no. Wow. His interests they lie elsewhere usually. No, I'm saying. We can find out. But I'm saying you can name at least 10. So what's his position? Is it still the same? Or should we 6, E4? Well, he didn't take knight D5, right? He plays F5, but now it's more... Why well, can't play well, A3? Well, now there's E, D, no? Like, so it's a bit different. Why well, can't play A3, knight C6? So this is uh, this is a gambit now, yeah? He's also running some maybe risks. Two, maybe. Uh -huh. And like EF, for instance. Does black have enough? I don't know. This knight looks like a great stabilizer, doesn't it? Mm hmm Now he has FE. Oh, yeah. Or does he? Yeah, he does. AB? Should D5. We should D5 first, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. If king e2, then maybe he can. So that bishop is uh, high? Yeah, yeah, no. What does he want here? What you want now? What do you know, Beckham? That I doubt. Victoria Beckham. Yeah, he might know Victoria. But although this is be before his time, right? No, they're still around. Is she not our generation? We're still around. Wow, so or so. <laughs> Compi says black is fine, of course. Bishop F6. And worry about nothing. But yeah, this is... It's a big commitment. Beckham played soccer, of course. Didn't you watch the hit movie Kick It Like Beckham? Yeah, Beckham was even pretty good, right? I think he was decent. <clears throat> he was part of the Galacticos. I don't know football very well. Do you follow basketball? Donovan no, Mitchell to the Cleveland Cavaliers? Who saw that coming? I know. I know nothing about basketball. What sports do you follow? Arm wrestling? Um, chess a bit. Right. That's and, the list. And that's it. I used to follow tennis. Um, but then, you know. Life is so short. No time for tennis. Well, no time for anything anymore. Yeah? Time time just flies. Tell me about it. Carson. But you, but you, you get things done. I mean, you have a podcast, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> the definition of getting things done. <laughs> J. 
chicken chess club, getting things done. Night C5, Carlson, I think he also has a podcast. And I listen to Fabio on a podcast, like every, all my information I get from podcasts. No? What kind of podcasts do you get? No, Fabio was on this perpetual chess. Magnus, I think his own podcast, The Magnus Effect, and he was on this Lex Friedman podcast. But in general, I don't know. I'm old. I no longer follow sports or comedy. I listen to, you know, German politics podcasts about... Don't get me started on um, politics. Gasum Lage and whatever super villain plan. Don't, don't even get me now. started on this. Yeah, no, It's probably a topic we should avoid, but I'm sure you understand how I can spend my time angrily uh, listening to German politics podcasts. I understand, yeah. I mean, I, I know if, uh, if it's, uh, it would probably be allowed to say that German politicians could have probably played the whole thing a bit better than they did. No? I'm not sure which thing, but I think I agree on whatever thing it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all, it's all very sad. Yeah. As a German taxpayer, sometimes I'm not too happy with what they're doing with my money. Likewise. Also, the dimensions, no? the kind of stuff where they will brag about having found 500 million. And then there's some other random thing where they instantly have 10 billion or 100 billion. Yeah, it's like the dimensions are always very confusing to me. Yes, yes, and and even like money aside, just the inconsistency. But okay, we shouldn't get started with the German politics. Otherwise, we'll never we should. Done. That's that's what our audience wants to hear. When you watch the Sinkerfield Cup, you really want to know about the nitty gritty of cum ex. What can Olaf Scholz remember? What can't he? Mm -hmm. Did you follow Christian Lindner's wedding? Zoom no. <laughs> looked windy. <laughs> no, I don't even follow anything. It just sometimes I randomly hear something, and this just uh... sometimes I feel I need any time away from from internet. That sounds sounds like a great idea, which of course none of us will do, but it does sound right anyway. Leiko had it figured out all along. I take C5. Aleko is amazing, no? It's just so prodigiously industrious. Like, how does he get all this done? I know. Also, if if you or Kramnik haven't gotten to coaching them, Leiko probably will be there, no? Like, and then he does all the other stuff. No, I think we only get to coach players that Leiko refused. Yeah, this is basically Leiko has all the jobs in the world. Well, that's basically how everything works. No commentary yeah. gigs, like coaching gigs, whatever, anything. Leiko thought he couldn't, couldn't get to. And he's doing all about. this without leaving his house. Yeah, which is maybe that's a secret. Yes. Yeah, Although true. I don't leave my house much and I don't get anything done. I see you every now and then at the Bundesliga, less that's than true. I would like, that's but true. I missed you in Bremen. I caught COVID. I got COVID returning from Madrid. I did leave my house for Madrid. I oh, went wow. to this closing ceremony. Um, and a lot of guys left that co closing ceremony, apparently, with COVID. I started feeling a little more tired than usual when I got back home. And... Yeah, I did a test in Madrid there, it was negative, but then when I got back home two days after, it was positive. So my guess is I caught it there, because from what I heard, Ding and who else was it? There were some other it sounds like cases of confirmed COVID. From, from Madrid, right? Like Ricci and Fabi, they showed out at the Bundesliga. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, no, I missed you in Bremen. Yeah, I missed you too. Yeah, I could I easily re replace I some should. of the people that were there with you and I'd be very yeah. happy. That's the nicest compliment you've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Even replace some of the people present with me. Um, but no, I was I was getting getting rid of 
rid of my COVID. I also missed German Cup. Did you play German Cup? No. Oh, no, you, you weren't available. Should have got it, I think, yeah. Should have, but then there were some other last-minute substitutions because... Should have was there. Miki was there. Illnesses. Georg was there. And, and somebody else. Yeah, it was supposed to be me. Then it was supposed to be somebody else. But then I think they got turned around again. Maybe Arkazi. Very possible. Magnus better, and he plays all the right moves, takes and goes bishop d2. Still a long day at the office for the Pomnishi. Yeah, Magnus. Yeah. He's good. And knight e4 doesn't work here, right? Probably like bishop a5. Somewhere you can even go back here probably after b6. Yeah, b6 bishop goes back and then you start taking stuff here. Yeah? Take on a6. And... Yeah, doesn't look great. Mm -hmm. Speaking of taking, I have to run to the bathroom again. I'm not sure what's happening with my bladder. Shall we go on another brief break? Yeah, of and, course. And come back with all of the action. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon. See you. I'm in Barcelona for my first chessable course and what do I do on a Friday night? Go play chess! It was a great place, Armando's Bar, and after playing some fun blitz games, it was blindfold, it was team chess, it was helping out a rookie who showed up, it was everything, lots of fun, after midnight in fact. I got a chance to show this puzzle, one of my favorite creations, to the group. To Someone proposed d6 check right away. Moment, this is a very important move. It is white to move and win, so d6 is an aggressive looking move. King back to d8. But this is where the puzzle really starts. And you have to have some serious geometric vision to solve this one. Now this next move is from outer space. You have to look into outer space and then come back, you find it. <laughs> there was a lot of commotion around. Armando shows up to take a look at it. Uh, people are drinking on the side. There's just all a bit of buzz going on. And everyone, of course, wanted to play the move Rook to E8. Like that was the move, that was the key move. That would be the winning move. But they all saw that the Rook was stopping that piece from going down there. So we were just deep into thought in the position, taking some time, someone noticed that there was the possibility of bishop to good, a5 good, good point that's a good point that's a good observation <laughs> <laughs> no i'm serious i'm dead serious he's right if the queen wasn't there then he would have something no, nice it was gentile who had the bright idea of playing queen to a7 uh, my friend you're not the only one playing chess so black could play check i didn't see the one you know when you're looking at you're your position looking, you're and wondering if you're kink and escape that it's not a good idea. Queen to f3 check is a check monster again. blow. And the king is running up the board. It's about to be like checkmated bird. pretty quickly. Didn't try king to g4, which would have been met by knight to e5. Double check and mate said, okay, don't want to see it. Let me go stop. Time to put it back. <laughs> this is, this is not a <laughs> position. He got punished for that one. No, it should be something like no terrible. Yeah, yeah. Like for instance this. Yes. Yeah, but then I just take this. Once again, we are dealing with the move rook to e8. Be nice if you could put the rook on e8, but of course the rook is there and ready to take it. So we couldn't do that move just yet. So he made a very good point. If this queen wasn't here, this would be a very yeah, 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 yeah. I could see the queen here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good point. Queen is stopping the bishop from going to a5. I pointed that out. What else could you do? Well, what could you do? Rook to e1 was not a move, another suggestion, but that would not work again because the attack is on. Queen takes b2 with check would stop that. You're so close. You see the good ideas, right? Yeah, so so let me ask you, let me actually another, make another point. If this rook wasn't here, if this rook wasn't here, yep. what would you do? I guess that plan would work a little bit more. Right? No, no, no. You showed a better plan. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. want Checkmate, right? Yeah. So if the rook wasn't here, this would be checkmate. Yes. If the rook wasn't here. Yeah. If this queen wasn't here, you'd have this move and looking very good like you have yes. an attack. So yeah. so this? these two pieces. To no, but yeah, this but move, no. this move, 
I start with this again. Again. So blocking the queen, plus you were threatening this, so you give this away if you did that. So you need to distract them. Good point. You're working it. This, this would be mate, and this would be very good. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> because you did try to distract both of them. Both right? at the same time. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> Bravo. You see? Very well. Queen back. Now you're attacking the queen and you're attacking the rook. If the rook takes, then it's checkmate. Yeah. Sorry. If the queen takes, it's not yet checkmate though because this move I can block. Yeah, you have space. Wait, you take, yes, I can run. Then you go here, then I can run again. And now, check me. Like? If you want to see more geometric ideas like this one, buy my course. You will learn amazing ideas, new ways to look at the chessboard, and maybe you'll play better chess too. E5, it's E5, Patsers. A complete repertoire against one E4, based on one E5, now available to study with Chessable's unique move trainer technology. The backbone is the Marshal Gambit against the Spanish, with three knight f6 against the Italian. Jan Gustafsson has revisited all these lines he has played for 20 years and worked on as a second for Peter Lecco and Magnus Carlsen, amongst others, with the help of the most powerful engines out there, Leela Zero and Stockfish 10. This has led to many new discoveries and a repertoire ready to master on chessable that can serve the student for a long chess career. Maybe E4 doesn't exist after all. E5, it's E5, Patsers. Gains that confidence, uh, plays a few uh, good events, stops looking inwards into his own insecurities. I like the no expectation part, so like that's something that has gotten better because sure, it's like not my full-time job. It's definitely good for chess in India and now there is Olympiad also, so there'll be more people following and mm -hmm. taking up chess as professional sport. Yeah. And it's surprisingly concrete still, no? Like, yeah. he takes d4, good move, this d takes d4, this d takes d5. This line was essential and forced, but uh, also not uh, rocket science to map out. played the Berlin, which I sort of expected, but I didn't really know what to do against, because in reality, very few people do. When we are playing a, an even game against someone of similar strength to us, usually we need to give something in order to obtain the initiative. Just how shrewd and cunning Ali Reza can be, even with a uh, very little time. I want to show you a game just to prove that I play these lines that I played against former world number two and a bit of a superstar, Gata Kamsky. As a kid, I spent hours every day reading about chess, about openings, chess history, and games played between 
world champions, grandmasters, all of them. My apps make learning much easier. Everything I know you can find in my apps. Magnus Trainer, Tactics Frenzy, and Play Magnus. You can learn the basic rules of chess, train with our 400 lessons, and even play against my digital self. Download and try my apps for free. Hi, I'm John Chess, inventor of chess, and also your new stepdad. And we're very disappointed in you, son. Welcome back everybody. First round of the Sinkerfield Cup with two marquee matchups. Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, putting pressure on Jan Nepomneshi. And we don't know what's happening in Ali Reza versus Fabiana Carana. Where do you want to go? I'm being told by the chat that both Fabiana and uh, Ali Reza are making best computer moves. Pretty good at, at chess, apparently. Probably. So, we should be six. We've seen e4. e4, I would have spotted. Pawn to f5. f5. Maybe and bishop h3. h3. Now it gets tougher. Mm -hmm. And bishop f6. Just improving the position here. Yeah. yeah, and at some point, white should solve this uh, this king issue, right? We were to put this king, king... E2 allows knight C2, right? Can you go A3? A3, knight C6. Yeah, you, you can do this. I don't know if you're happy. Never too happy. Just curious. What, what happens? Takes, let's say. Take, take, knight D4. and uh, King somewhere. D3, I guess. King D3, B5, bishop E3 might... Try to crawl out here. Yeah. Knight b3, rook a d1, right? Mm -hmm. This looks fine. Yeah, it looks good for white. Yeah. yeah. Maybe some more cynical move works as well. Yeah. Yeah, black, black should have uh, good moves. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably a draw, right? King c2, knight d5, takes everything, bishop e3, and some sort of a draw at the end of it. Yep. Takes so whatever move. Mm -hmm. So, odds are it could peter out somehow. And Magnus, Sani Ponishi decides to give a pawn. Yeah? b5 was played, as expected. He pushed his mm -hmm. b-pawn. The problem she goes a5. We can he might be game. happy to give this pawn, right? You if you take it, uh, take taking d6, for instance, counterplay. Oh. King c5. I know, aren't you still suffering? Well, I'm suffering, but king b6, at least my position looks sort of stable now. Yeah. Maybe not for long, yeah. No, no, of course. Why is better if knight d7 and but black also has some jumps now, yeah? Knight c5, knight d5. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> My natural inclination would stable. be not to take this pawn, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe to play b4 or uh, um, then of course you take and play king d7 right mm -hmm. and uh, and then I have to show some talent h5 maybe wow is that talented uh, rook e3 rook a d1 And initiative, yeah. For whom? Rook a8. That yeah, could also be complete BS, of course, yeah. And then you play rook a2 check, and maybe black is winning now. Yeah. yeah. A lot of counterplay. Yeah, in that line, I could also just take on g6, yeah, instead of rook a d1. Looked. Uh... Unlikely, but interesting. Rook d3, and then 
takes on f7. Wow. That is very talented. Yeah, but he just That's took cute. the pawn. He just took, sorry. Yeah, he likes his pawns. King d6 on the board. And yeah, we'll get something like we looked at now. I guess he'll cover this pawn. We'll still be suffering. Yeah, there machine. will be suffering for sure, yeah. I don't know if after king f2, king c5, the, the line we had, if it makes sense to, to sacrifice a spawn, b6, king b6, rook b5, and king c7, let's say rook c1 check, king b8, uh, you lose the pawn, but you, you get so much activity, maybe g5, and then as a, the, the, there will be a lot of suffering here too, right? And somehow try to attack the, the B pawn. Rook C3, B3, or Rook C6, B6. Yeah, some some borderline stuff. Yeah, with the black and survivors. And... Agnes likes his pawns, though. Is he just going to give it? He likes winning, too. King F2 on the board. Mm -hmm. We'll find out. In the meantime, Hans Niemann continues to torture Levon. The rooks uh, have disappeared. They exchanged all the rooks, but Black's position didn't get more fun, right? Still looks pretty bad, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, the, the Black Queen has absolutely no entries, right? Which means uh, Black is doomed to passivity and White can slowly prepare h4, h5, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't even need to slowly prepare it and just do it. Can do it fast, right? <laughs> What's the clock situation? Uh, Hans is a bit low on the clock, but it's already moved 32. And with the 10, no, with the 30 extra seconds, he shouldn't be in any big time trouble here. Yeah, also it's 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 okay. He's taking his time. Why shouldn't he, right? Fair enough. Let's have a look at Mohamed Yarov versus Wesley So. Mohamed Yarov had a strange tournament in this Rapid and Blitz thing where I think he started very badly. And then won like three games in a row in the Rapid. If he catches fire, he can still crush anybody. But Wesley? Wesley's tough. It's a rare case, yeah. Well, white plays queen e7, and black uh, can also play queen e2. Oh, yeah, both queens entering opponent's territory. Rook f1, but it's difficult to come up with a follow up, right? For black, oh, he just played bishop e6. No queen e5 for you. I guess some c5, and then can kick the queen out again if he needs to. It's and fine. if white plays h4, then probably queen e2, right? Or just c5. Okay. Yeah, c5 is good. Looks solid. So is Mamed Yarov equal here? I want to play b4. Make sure that's priority number one. Maybe it is. Queen e2, rook f1. We still cover everything. And b4 looks slightly awkward, but maybe also good. b4, a5. E3, Queen A4. It's also slightly awkward to meet, I mean. Yeah, maybe just Rook A1. Sad. I want to take AB. 
Ah, AB. Ah, sorry, I missed you at AB. Hanging in there. And I have a feeling why should have something brilliant here, some way to continue. But knight d2, I would like to play, but queen e2 looks winning for black. Yeah? Hmm. I don't see anything brilliant. So there's nothing brilliant. White might have to be careful. Maybe h4, yeah, and just go for it. No? C5 and hide this bishop somewhere on e5. Now you can always play rook e8, right? Kicking me first. Yeah, also if I just attack, what? Yeah, maybe I have to what go you got? on yeah. g4 and uh, yeah. Uh, not great, not great. Hmm. Let's see what Compi says. No, it says b4 equal. Fair enough. And Monsieur Dominguez? He, he got his pawn back. Must be nice. What did he do in this position where he thought forever? He played bishop g5. Knight c5 by Maxime. Takes, takes. b3. Yeah, why couldn't he play king a7 trying to, to to hold on to his pawn? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Bishop c4. And bishop c4 followed by queen e2, yeah? It's probably just... Um... Maybe on b5 we can take down you. Yeah. Not so awkward to defend this guy if we want to. Yeah, no, I think rook f8, but then queen e2, as you say, yeah, yeah. b5 will probably run into into bishop takes b5. And yeah. a5 just looks too ugly. Yeah. Rook e1, no bishop h6 or whatever. Yeah, this looks very That's good. good. So you gave it back. What is this now? It's the French school of suffering in full effect. It is suffering. I'm just not sure how bad it is. F, F somewhere, no? F5 or F6. Maybe F5 weakens the pawn too much. No? F4. Rook D4. D4 yeah. mm -hmm. Play super slowly, also weakening a bit. Uh, yeah, feels strange to lock this rook up. Yeah, but now I'm like, can't go. Seven, seven, a seven a knight six, six, knight a five. No? Hmm. So, not too bad, yeah? Uh, not too terrible. Also, I noticed that uh, Maxim he overestimates the defensive. Uh, capacity of neither positions. He probably does not think he's doing badly at all. Yeah, maybe because he's so good at defending them and has so much practice. He also thinks he can get away with anything. Yet? Probably he has to, right? If he gets exactly. a bad neither position every game. Yeah. What's he going to do? Just yeah. sit there and think, ugh, lost again. Oh yeah, computer says, okay. Slightly better for white. 0.50. Knight f5. Maxime Achillagraf, the leader of the tour. Yeah, he won that uh, the classical tournament a bit suddenly, right? Wasn't yeah, he? On... It was it super bad the Romanian stuff? Yes. Right? <laughs> he was on, I think, minus one for most of the tournament. And he won a couple of games and won a rapid tie break, and suddenly he won the tournament.
whenever we think Maxim is struggling, he just wins another tournament. Also, the the reigning world list champion. That that is that so is much true. talent. And speaks fluent French. He speaks excellent French. Yeah, it's a difficult language. I was actually just spend most of my time now trying to learn some French. Ah. Parlez-vous le français? <laughs> Very badly. I'm uh, trying not to uh, embarrass uh, our listeners by uh, saying the five words that I know. But, but I'm trying. What I like about this is that I have no practical reason at all for learning French. No, all French chess players speak fluent English. Yes. That was meant as a joke, but it's actually not a joke. No, they, 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 speak, great, they yeah. speak great English. Yeah. Yeah. So are you trying to conquer the French market now that Kramnik has taken over the Indian market? Leko has the rest of the world. You you need to you need to get to France. Well, I have some competitive advantage compared to Leko. Then you leave your house. No, Leko yes, went to I, leave, I can leave my house. <laughs> no, no. I saw pictures of Leko at a training session with Nepomnishi. He left his house. I oh, did. Yeah, nice. But Isn't good Kramnik point by the in... chat. Kremnik is based in France. Yeah, maybe that's not your market. Although I hear his French is not stellar. You can still overtake him there. The Kramnik in France, he was in... Uh, oh, no, he in lives in Switzerland. Or, uh, yeah, in Geneva. He... Yeah, yeah, I think he lives in Geneva. He was in Geneva, and uh, I remember that he was complaining that he doesn't feel like a rich man in Geneva. Ah, oh, that's unpleasant. But to be fair, very few people feel rich in Geneva. So you think it's because rich people seize out places to live where other rich people live, and then by comparison, they no longer feel rich. I think there might be some some truth to this mm -hmm. theory. I'm sure he's living a good life, Vladimir. I've never been to Geneva. It's a beautiful city. It's probably very nice. It is really, really beautiful. What's the language there? French is first language or German? French is basically the only language. Oof. They are very, very, very serious about their French. Oh. At some point, yeah, you, you, you come into this area of Lausanne and Geneva, and suddenly nobody understands German. Oof. So you're praising the city of Geneva. You're learning French. You're competitive with Kramnik. I can see a move <laughs> coming. I cannot afford Geneva. Hmm. I guess. I have to find out. Kingy 2 played by Ali Reza, but that allows the jump, no? He's not afraid of the jump. It allows a lot of things, yeah. And I think maybe he's provoking uh, Fabi. Bishop takes d5, for instance. You take... Rook e8, and now your king finds safety where? On f3, yeah? I don't know how safe it is. Ah, oh, there's knight e1. Yeah, knight c2, rook b1, knight e1. Yeah. Oh. This square, I'm not sure how happy I am. Should be made, no? Yes, yeah, doesn't look right. Here, Compi says bishop e3, and it's still fine. But can we just, just as an exercise after King F4 find the checkmate? Sure. So knight e1, king f4. Are you gonna store it for your next Eric Icy session? <laughs> I mean I cannot give these positions to him. Yeah, it's a bit uh, so rook e4 and rook e5 check, right? Check. Oops, sorry. Uh, rook e4 check, king f5, and then rook e5 check. Also bring the other rook. Check. No, we escape. And then, so g5, king g4, we escape. Yeah, so we just need to bring the other rook and. Uh, this one uh, looks tough. A four. Hmm. 
No checkmate, yeah? They should be. Um, but we can still go G6 check, right? Oops. The king G4, H5 is me. Mm -hmm. But we can but take. king F6, yeah, and I thought knight F3. Threatening yeah, my me. My own check. But then rook E6 and, ah, rook E6 and rook F8, you have king E7, yeah, yeah. that's unfair. So how do we mate after, um, maybe we have to go like king F, king F7 maybe, yeah, at the end of it. Which line here, check? You take rook E8, F4. King F7 here or? Yeah, king F7 <laughs> threatening G6, H5. Hmm. Nah. G6 king. and then bishop F1, yeah, now you King doesn't to... care. Yeah, you run to h3. Okay, so king f7 is not it. And the rook e5 check is also not it. Yeah, take and king f4, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do we mate? Maybe there's no mate. There is mate. There's definitely mate. <sighs> this move is not bad, no? <laughs> just to threaten this. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of good moves. It just looked like the position after king f5 should be made. No, rook d8, f4, knight d3, best move. King g4, knight e5, king f5. Rook d4. Ah, oh, this is difficult. Cute, stuff, yeah. but still not mate. Although fairly close. Yeah, I always found mating this advanced king very difficult. I never manage. Like <laughs> in blitz, if you don't have time to calculate, it's much easier to run away. Okay, computer is not very concerned here. Spots knight of seven, knight h six, much faster. That's a beautiful mate, yeah. Yep. Okay, what's on the board? If I play rook f e eight, that feels slow. Yeah, rook f e eight, bishop e three. Yeah. Why do this? And bishop takes d5 looks natural to me. D. Nice. Okay, the same position here. Rook goes. And then, yeah, take and uh, g6. Yeah, normally you don't expect to lose this position. Tenable. But why does a pawn up? Dream of making something happen. Yeah, I know if I can play d6 and try to push, but d6, bishop, d4, yeah, I probably will lose this pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he plays bishop c2 right away. Um, potentially allowing some exchange sacrifices, probably not, no? Mm How -hmm. oh, you want to do it, Bishop F5? Bishop F5 looks like an interesting try. It takes, takes, and then Knight A1, Rook A1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this looks nice for white, doesn't it? It, it could be, yeah. B5. Or... But white always has Knight F6, yeah? So B5 yeah. is a bit less terrifying than it would usually be. Yeah, could be nice, and also stylistically, Alireza would like this very much, I think. So, what are we missing? I just played rook ac1. I don't know if we missed it or he missed it. Bishop f5 looked actually interesting. 
Here, computer says the zero, zero, zero takes EFB6. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Looks better for white, but maybe white is not on time to cover everything here. G4, OK4, yeah, this is important, yeah. Concrete game, blah, blah. That's what they say, yeah. Do you think they're right? Oh, chess is a concrete game, yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, computers have proven it, and the new generation as well. So what does that tell us? The knowledge of the old books is overrated? <laughs> we don't need uh, we just need new books uh, need, we need new books yeah. Need new books yeah. will you write one uh, I don't know maybe one day I wasn't thinking about it yet also yeah when you write a book about chess, okay, you can write a book about chess, but you cannot write a book about chess life. Why not? Because then you would have to lie. Mm. As if you write an honest book about chess life, then you would be sued by like 800 people. No, uh, it's not. No oh, good. This, sounds, this sounds juicy. Yeah, you know. I want to read it. Why? Well, impossible to write an honest book. Mm. But yeah, you could write about, you know, games and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Who was the last guy to write an honest book about chess life? Donner, the king? I think Donner is such a fake book. Yeah, I mean, this... ah, even that one is not honest. No, that one is just fake all the way. No, that... hmm. uh, no, I haven't read that many books about chess life. Maybe there aren't that many. Well, you know. But usually in my experiences, like... You're sitting at this uh, one one bar at tournament. Everybody else is sitting in the room with their laptops. No, like, it's not chess life. Yeah, it's uh, I know, not my experience. Wow, sounds like you have stories to share. One day, and that day may never come. Magnus, he's doing he's doing smart stuff, I guess. Yeah, the chat was screaming that uh, that uh, this position is like plus five, which surprised me a bit. Apparently, he had to go b6 instead of b6, rook b1. Uh, yeah. red. Ah, directly, yeah. yeah. What's the Apparently big difference? B6 is good understanding. Okay. Now e4. That's a tough move. Concrete game, yeah, chess. Well, I mean, Black's king is so vulnerable, right? Rook d1, Oops. rook c5, and... and... C'est fini, as we say in German. C'est fini, yeah. But what he did also doesn't look terrible, no? Rook d1, rook h8, g5. I ah, just kept his Some crossing around. Still a pawn up with a bunch of weaknesses. Should also win. You know why he likes pawns? No. Because he does have the technique to convert them. That helps. That helps a lot, yeah. But I don't have any technique and I still like pawns. Like You probably like being pawned down even less. Yep. And actually I don't have the technique the to five, run, right? He likes two pawns even more. Yeah, rook mm -hmm. d4, bishop a2. I think this is a resignable territory now. Making it look easy, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And also doesn't help for the next world championship. Magnus keeps crushing the players that are playing in it. Yeah, now this next world championship match will be somehow strange. Yeah, just also Ding Liren. I mean, how could he finish second in that candidates? Right? Wasn't he on minus two after the first half? I think he might have been. That's his approach to the candidates. Play horribly in the first half and then play well in the second. It hmm. usually is not enough, no? 
Yeah. Yeah, I think we can safely switch to some other games. Yeah, this one is right. Back to Fabi. So okay, this is not, one. This is not took. equal, yeah. He took, took, took. This is oh, not. Oh, he equal. must suffer. Yeah, I just just take some p three. Yeah, and and royal suffering. Yeah, it's actually far from equal. Yeah, um, no, not equal at all. Although Fabi doesn't usually lose endings, but okay, this one is not pleasant. Well, I can play b three, a four, and then start uh, putting his rooks on the uh, on the f file. Yeah? Not so easy for black. This knight on d five is a is a monster. Chad is saying they look forward to the chapter about me. Nah. First of all, I'm not important enough. Secondly, I don't think Rustam has that much dirt on me. I could be wrong, though. You never know. I have no dirt on you at all. Yeah, you're like Excellent. one of my favorite people. Wow. But you can have dirt on your favorite people, no? Like, just for the book. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you politely if you would like to share your dirt. Then. Oh. <laughs> share your dirt <laughs> no but but even even the chat knows that you are squeaky clean I'd be very curious about the book but yeah it's a problem it's a problem nowadays very hard to air your grievances but you can also just write a feel-good book about the chess world. How exciting it is to travel, to to have a life-size statue of yourself in Tashkent, like that kind of stuff. I mean, it's always possible to write a fake book, of course, yeah. Do you remember that uh, that thing that Kramnik once did with the fake commentary? No. He, he, he once played a game against Timman, I think, and... Uh, he had the commentary to this game in in New in Chess. So basically, you know, blah, blah, blah. So commentary, you know, this is mm -hmm. nice. This is great. This, 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 that. And then he said, okay, this. I apologize for this first part. This first part was sort of a parody on usual commentary in chess magazines. All of it wow. is rubbish. Now let's really tell you what happened in that game. So he did this once. Wow. And then he had the part two, yeah, the actual commentary. And he enjoyed it so much that uh, all of his post-game press conferences in 2018 he did as a parody, yeah, like basically, yes. <laughs> nice. What's going on? Ali Reza gave up the night. He's, these kids they really don't read books like about good night, bad bishop. This it is, just takes. This is what is this move? This is truly shocking. Why would he Bro do that? I don't know. He probably thinks that rook and the rook and game is very promising, but uh, very strange. Yeah. Isn't this just? I mean, I have the computer, but it also looks equal, no? Rook to ed six. It looks at least like a much much better version for black than whatever he had, right? Do you think and rook the d one game was winning. Yeah. The pawn ending is is a draw, right? I'm sure. It also doesn't look winning at all. Yeah, take Where take breakthrough f5 yeah that's very surprising i mean even if you think it's not winning like well, why why isn't this better than than what he did oh, it's such, such a nice night yeah okay very strange yeah how's our boy wesley doing um so this b4 was played a5 a3 he took ah queen b8 very defensive queen b8 <laughs> sorry mm. he's on height apologies thank you slightly awkward move no i know the queen was looming here trying to mm -hmm. go to e2 and he goes all the way back well his idea is rook e8 right catching the white queen bishop e5 rook e8 happened 
he's just simplifying to an equal endgame from a nice position, maybe, or maybe mm -hmm. it was equal. Here, are you worse with black? Rook, or? B, rook b7, can I do this? Knight c6 and then rook bishop d7, rook b6, something should work here. Yeah, yeah king f8. This works. Mm -hmm. Okay, then it's equal here. Yeah? Like rook b7, I can go somewhere, but we're not going to win. Rook b4, this should be. Should be drawing good hands, yeah? Rook c4. Should even be drawing mediocre hands. Although Mamad Yarov is good at like grinding this out. Yeah, most top players are, right? Uh, everybody enjoys a good ending. Fair. Speaking of enjoys a good ending. People want to know if you've rewatched Constantine recently. Um, just a few times. What's the plot of Constantine again? So Keanu Reeves, he's he hunts not vampires, but like spirits, or what are we fighting against? <laughs> Uh, basically, uh, uh, he has this ability to send uh, uh, demons back to hell. Uh -huh. Useful. And uh, uh, the idea is that there is some sort of a balance mm -hmm. and that uh, angels and demons do not directly intervene in human right. life. Right. And when they violate this balance... And John deports, Wick comes. <clears throat> John Wick deports them back to hell. Mm -hmm. Sort of. This is one of his abilities. His other abilities is, is one of his other impressive abilities is being able to go to hell himself. So he's which... also a demon in his own right. Well, he for some reason he can sort of cross this uh, this thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is a dubious talent, yeah. If you ask me, like, why would you want to go to hell, right? But also, if you curse at him. And tell him go to hell. He might just literally. <laughs> he might go just there. do it. <laughs> yeah. So what? I just went Thursday. <clears throat> but he's also not not a happy fella, is he? Like I haven't seen Constantine as often as you, but I recall him as a somewhat cynical, sickly guy as well. Well, he's not a happy fellow because, uh, um, uh, well, early in his life he attempted suicide. So he knows that when he dies, he'll go to hell, yeah? And this uh, sort of um, prospect uh, weighs uh, somewhat on him. Gotcha. Uh, and, uh, and um, yeah, very difficult to find uh, your way around this, you know? Check it out. Constantine with Keanu Reeves. Got bad reviews, but what do they know? Not a damn thing. Hans. Is Hans making progress? Doesn't look like progress. What's the horsey doing here? Doesn't look like progress at all, no. Bring the horsey back. And the H pawn is still on H2, yeah? So somehow, yeah. He was shuffling, yeah? Not. Yeah, he somehow didn't find the plan. Yeah, maybe he just wanted to make it to to move forty, but uh... yeah, that he did too. Mm -hmm. huh. Okay, gonna gonna continue for a while, but he hasn't made a lot of progress, if any. Magnus still winning. Here stuff happened. Yeah, Linier sacrificed an exchange. Well, took. His point being that this is not great for black. Mm -hmm. So 94 takes, takes. He gets two pawns, the bishop gets a nice square on e4. This is right up your alley, no? Well, not exactly, because rook d4, rook d8, rook d2 is very active, right? Mm -hmm. 
uh, why it is not 100% safe. Although maybe safe enough, right? Because the queen b5, queen a6 is annoying. The black queen has to stay busy. White is probably safe. Yeah, maybe. But king, king a7, white will have queen b5 threatening mate, right? So rook d2 either? <clears throat> Not threatening mate, but sort of <clears throat> teasing mate. Also, still no threat here. Like if we go, and give away. still go anywhere. Yeah, rook d four. They they would have to show some some awareness, some tactical. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm just That's moving nice. around. Maybe it's equal. Yeah, maybe you could go h4 at some point, yeah? fix the spawn, h5, hope for the best. Seems so slithery, though. He will find ways to generate play. Yeah, Not sure if slithery is a word, but it sounds right. Slithery it sounds like slithery, no? no that wasn't this exactly. Harry Potter. I'm familiar. It's the good guys. Slytherin is good, guys? Yeah. I'm not as big an expert as you, but that's how I understood it. The villains are Hufflepuff, no? Please. The weaklings. Uh, uh, that's not how I remember this. Okay. Maybe, maybe chat can weigh in. The chat says you're wrong. What do they know? Chad knows everything. Chad just watched Harry Potter differently than I did. But I know you're you're a Potter hat, so I will I will trust your opinion. I'm not at all a Potter hand. I'm more like a Fantastic Beast. Isn't that the extended uh, Potter universe? Potterverse? No, no. Somehow not. No, it just kind of acquired a life of its own. Just much like Hobbit, yeah? It's not really Lord of the Rings universe. Yeah? Mm. I would argue it's the it's the universe. Hobbit is like literally the same characters. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Didn't you have the feeling that it's just a completely different movie? I don't know. I even read the books and Hobbits is like an 80 page kids book, no? I know. So it was I very know. hard to squeeze like three action movies out of that one. Right? Yeah. Also, I'm once again not an expert, but what I recall from the first Hobbit movie is they run around some forest for a while and stuff happens. Then at some point they get tired of running around in the forest and they call the eagles and they they fly the next 15 kilometers, no? They could have called the eagles like two hours earlier. They cannot call the eagles. The eagles just show up whenever they want to? The eagles are sort of divine. I mean, these are not just eagles. Yeah, they're sort of demigods of this universe. Yeah, well, good eagles. <laughs> You cannot just you know, call them at will. Well, are they busy? Like they're solving crimes or what, what are they doing? <laughs> are they doing the demigod stuff? Yeah, <laughs> what <am I? laughs> It seems pretty important. Also, Lord of the Rings, if they're demigods, like fly, fly Frodo to Mordor, no, like would have caused, saved him a lot of trouble. I mean, they picked him up later, but these eagles are no wishy washy guys. That's my review. Yeah, what kind of a movie would that make? <laughs> oh, it would be shorter. Like, okay. You want treasure? Sure. Here's an eagle. Go fly it. Get the treasure. <clears throat> Pomnish is trying to mix it, but he's not going to be able to do it. Rook takes d5. Huh? 
65. It's gone. Then rook takes g5. Yeah, should be should be plenty. Yeah? It's two pawns and a mating attack. That's usually enough, no? Yeah. Looks good enough. Yeah, Ali Reza is exchanging all the rooks. I, uh, I didn't understand that that decision. That's a really weird decision, if you ask me. Why make a draw there? Like, yeah. even in the chicken chess club, <clears throat> this looks like uh, the perfect position to just play forever, no? For for someone who's so insanely competitive and focused on winning, like Ali Reza. Maybe you were right that yeah, Fabi Fabi hurt him a little in the candidates. That he wants to play it safe, but this looks as safe as it gets. Yeah, this is, this is uh, unusual. I wonder what Kramnik will have to say about this. That seems to be one of the drawbacks of working with Kramnik as well. No, then if you if you don't do well in the tournament that he prepared you for, he might he might have some unkind words. No. <laughs> I don't know. I wonder. This little bit that I worked with Kramnik, he, uh, he was actually very nice to work with. Yeah, no, that I don't doubt. But no, what I meant is he prepared for the candidates with Ali Reza. And then I haven't seen it actually, but he was doing some commentary and was saying, yeah, this guy Ali Reza, just not good enough when things didn't go well in the candidates. Well, obviously. What I, what I heard, I'm not sure how, exactly how it was, but there was. There was some, maybe you just said. Of course, it's always how the games uh, went, but yeah, it's always unpleasant, yeah, when you put a lot of effort into something and uh, and then you see the player completely unmotivated and completely uncaring, yeah, and it's not great. You think Ali Reza was unmotivated? I think all well, he was just kind of not that. functioning, yeah, and this yeah, is yeah. what you want to see, right? Yeah. yeah, whatever the reason was behind this, he was not really functioning. Chess saying you said that Ali Reza has a poor understanding of chess. Yeah, I didn't know what the phrase was, but I know I know that he said something not flattering for Ali Reza. Then again, yeah, the way it looked in the candidates, some of the games Ali Reza lost clearly weren't. Yeah, weren't looking great. Like this black game against Nakamura, where he really. Oh, when he took GF, yeah, like yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that, that, yeah. Yeah, that looked tough. Yeah. Hmm. Magnus Magnus seems to be functioning Rook T5 it's just just a question of how long Nepomnishi wants to drag this out no there's no chance of saving it I, to, to be fair I'm surprised he hasn't done it yet yeah yeah Castle's gonna win. This is fairly drawish. Is Fabi trying to win? I mean, why do we why can't just stand? Yeah? King g2, f5, king f2, and no, here yeah, this is actually losing. Black yeah. might end up in, in Sutsung. <laughs> I'll take in King H2, yeah, and this is... Yeah, we win. King. So Fabi shouldn't push too hard. But of course, if he does nothing, it's a dead draw. White can't enter anywhere. So that leaves us with the adventures of, of young Hans Niemann trying to win this position against Levon Aronian. Maxime trying to generate counterplay against Linier and the Schachmaster I know who's playing for a win here probably White 
What are the draw for rules? Do you know? Can they offer draws? No draw offers at all? What's the status there? I don't know. No draws, apparently. There's a question for you if you think uh -huh. Fabi is still as high up on all time list as you used to think. Oh, first of all, I don't remember where we put him. We did this all time greatest players list with Peter Heine two, three years ago. I'm not sure when it was. I can't remember where we had Fabi, but in general, it wasn't the ranking wasn't based on future performance. So I would guess, where was he, like around 20, maybe? I would guess I stand by it, like he had the, the, the what, the second highest rating ever? Like, made, mm -hmm. yeah, lost the World Championship match to Magnus as narrowly as possible. Maybe the greatest tournament result ever, the 7 out of 7 in the Sinkerfield Cup. I don't think we can bump him 20 places for having two poor tournaments in a row. No, he should, later. he should definitely be in top 20. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure where he was, but my my hunch is probably all the world champions were ahead of him. Then you can have a debate about the greatest non-world champions. I can't recall, but I would guess he was around 20, mm -hmm. which I, I would stand by. I had big problems with your list. Oh, I can't I can't remember the order. But... Like I, I just, I mean, I, what, I, what I thought was really insane is that Karkov, I think, didn't make top five in your list. And I thought, okay, this is ridiculous. This was a big, big controversy. I'm not sure where Karpov was, like number number six or number five. Yeah, you I just, can't recall. He was like behind what, Alikain or something. And I just thought, yeah, come on, yeah. I can't recall. I know this was this was a big topic. I think it was because whatever system was used put heavy um weight on results in in world championship matches and he lost a bunch to Gary but yeah off he also <laughs> won a few world championship matches two against Korchno no uh -huh. okay I mean he he beat Korchno uh, the first time in 74 and he beat uh, he beat Vichy in 99. Ah, uh, that one we didn't we didn't count after. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if if I would ever win a match against Vichy, I would definitely count it. Hmm. Fair um, enough. <laughs> so I think just this... but that was the one where Vichy had to like win eight matches in a row, and then after two days rest, play Karpov, right? Yeah, but that I just think this the sheer weight of his historic achievement, yeah, including scoring like plus seventy five in Linares, yeah, and, and yeah, so... yeah, no, <clears throat> I don't really. I don't really disagree. Complaints. No, I can't put it put it all on pH. <laughs> Why not? Eh? But yeah. <laughs> no, also Lasker Lasker was very high, which feels a bit strange. Like you can't argue with his record, but you can of course argue with I'm not a big chess historian, with him, I guess, dodging or at the very least not playing the likes of Capablanca for, for a long time. Yeah, uh, also some of his opponents in World Championship matches were of he course, avoided weaker. all the tough matches. Yeah, he avoided yeah, so. Rubinstein, he avoided Nimcevic, he avoided really tough matches for Come a long. He would crush Nimcevic. <clears throat> I'm not sure about Rubinstein though. Yeah, Rubinstein is different than Nimcevic. I mean, he even sort of got a nosebleed against Schlechter. Yeah, and... mm -hmm. Schlechter was tough, but he was still Schlechter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I kind of agree, but as always, yeah, how much you weigh these soft factors, of course, in these days, where champions have much more of a say whom they would play against and when. Well, yeah, the numbers look pretty nice, no? We're champion for 27 years and so on. Oh, that's true. Yeah, oh, yeah. I it's just always thought that just uh, depends what you're the top weigh, four huh? in chess is, is automatic, I always thought, just by strength. I think it's just Magnus, Gary, Fisher, Karpov. Yeah, like, yeah, and then you start thinking about the rest, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's that's a fair take, but it's, it's very difficult once you start weighing in. Whatever. I think I sort of agree. Magnus won. Yeah. This was a remarkably smooth and one-sided performance. Yeah. Also, 
Of course, with hindsight, probably a good choice because he knows Jan is incredibly well prepared. But Jan hasn't played a thousand games in the Carlsbad structure. Yeah, well, Magnus probably has. Mm -hmm. Maybe he just understands subtleties here without the theory. A bit better than Jan still, who's more of a Grunfeld 1e4, 1c4 player, really. Yeah, but also this the, the end game they got was objectively quite unpleasant for Black, right? Yeah, so I understand why not exchange the bishops when you have the chance, I think. Well, maybe computer says f4. Maybe it wasn't happening. Well, f4 bishop b4, then at least you get a square, right? Yeah, so... yeah, yeah. Like, to allow this king g2, bishop f2, you know you're going to suffer now. Yeah. But yeah, it's what he does, no? Like his good games makes it look so easy. Take a pawn. Don't give it back. Take another pawn. Also, don't give it back. Yeah, it could be it could be a similar exhibition. Yeah, this game. Yeah, and yeah, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hans it's the guy who just went unbeaten through the candidates fourteen games here, like just yeah. Mm -hmm. Destroys him. All right, there's that. Ali Reza versus Fabiano is a draw. Yeah, somewhat mysterious ending to this game, of course. You know, I'll never understand. And Hans is no longer better. Yeah, just Hans is trying to trap his own queen. Yeah, it doesn't look like quite is better anymore. To go g4 to avoid that, but all of a sudden black gets some activity, maybe. Uh, not sure. Yeah, g4, even queen g6. So, this isn't this a draw? Uh, we sit. Yeah, now he had a very nice position, but probably not anymore. No? Levon stood his ground barely. Yeah, Levon can also be a good defender. No surprises there. Wesley. Is Wesley, does he have to be a good defender here? Or maybe they just exchange all the pieces? Can he also go like bishop g4? to make it how, how easy of a draw is this, obviously? You don't have to do it. Do you think this is just a dead draw? I wouldn't think it's dead, no? No, that's why I'm asking. Like, I understand it's supposed to be draw, but I wouldn't go no, for something like this happily. G because if rook b2, h4 looks dangerous, right? Yeah. Yeah, apparently. We have time here, but. King e1 and then e2, d3, yeah. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Alirez and Missy evaluated the position that he had. He like he thought he was better without the knight? Or... No, no, he thought he didn't have anything to begin with. So strange, even without calculating any line. No, it's really... <laughs> I mean, maybe it's not winning, but how can you not think white is better here? <laughs> yeah. Kramnik's not going to be happy. Maybe Kramnik is out of the picture. Eh? I don't know. And if he was saying uh, life that uh, Ali Reza doesn't have an understanding and maybe it didn't do wonders to their relationship. Ali Reza not taking here doesn't prove him wrong. <laughs> yeah, it seems like Crowning maybe had a point. <laughs> I don't know. No, I have no clue about the, the nature of their work, but yeah, Lohor. Mentioned that his French spy spotted them on some French beach going for a walk before the candidates. So they did work. Yeah, here we get this in the Wesley game. Wesley doesn't have to take on F3, of course. I was just curious if you would do it. Or... This, is, this is suffering, right? Either way. Game continues, no? We go here. It's 
some rook e6 or even e4 yeah you still have a bunch mm. to prove right yeah and here i have to take anyway yeah mm -hmm. something similar oh, this, this is a, this is a draw of course but uh, it's not it's not a joy so wesley we'll have to put in some extra time Mainly we'll have level. To put in some extra time, no? My dear friend MW recently watched Stranger Things season four. Rostam, that sounds like a show that you would watch with your with your family, no? Like are you a Stranger Things household? Never seen a minute of it. Oh wow. Shocking. What's on in the on the Kazim Chan of television these days? I know you're very busy, like um, stealing students from Leco, but if you if you can take a break, what do you watch? Well, I was uh, watching some 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 Fre French TV. Ah, excellent. Um, like what I... game game shows? <laughs> no, no, no. Like 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 TV shows like. How do you pronounce it? Lupin or whatever you say. But that's not French. That's just a Netflix bubblegum show, no? Like it's the new one with, uh, yes. with Omar C. Yes. I... Ah, I thought it was weak. I read Lupin as a kid. I learned a lot of detective tricks from him. The show disappointed me. I thought it's good French, yeah. Have you seen... Le Bureau de Légion. No. It's a great show. It's a spy show. French spies. Sounds Mathieu like Kasowitz, he's spying on everybody. It's very good. But we are planning to, to see the, the Lord of the Rings show, yeah? whatever it's called on the... Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea what it's called. House of the Dragon? No. But this is the sad thing about it. At the end of the day, yeah, we're, we're all going to see it. It's beautiful. Finally, we're back to monoculture. The last couple of years, ever since Game of Thrones stopped, we didn't have anything we could talk about because everybody's watching their own shows. Like you and three other guys, you were watching Lupin. I was watching The Bureau de Legends. There was no one to talk about any of these things. But, but now it... we'll all see the Lord of the Rings show. The Game of Thrones show, it's great news, even if they're crap. And they will break your heart at the end. No? I don't know. Hmm. You're still mad at Game of Thrones for the season finale? Yes. You're not? No. I'm thankful for the many hours of great pleasure and pain <laughs> they gave me. I thought Better Call Saul was quite good. I don't know. I, I never liked Breaking Bad that much, which always gets me into trouble because most mm -hmm. people like it. Um, and I, I've seen like the first three seasons, I think, of Better Call Saul. I thought it was very slow, but everyone tells me it keeps getting better and better and I should stick with it. Uh, I think it, it it keeps a very decent quality throughout and it also it's also finished, so... Just three more seasons and you'll be done. I don't know. Maybe. So much stuff to watch. Yeah, so little time. Wesley's going to draw. These guys also draw? Question mark? Probably, yeah. Although, um, somehow maybe White is risking a bit more, no? To exchange rooks, like usually they teach you if your opponent has two rooks and you have one, you should keep it. But I'm not sure that applies here. So these two rooks could get very active, no? Yeah. I mean, normally you should exchange and play king c2 and slowly kind of um, kind of weather the storm. I don't see how much black can do here. Yeah? White can go B4 and the black cannot even really enter. Mm -hmm. Those shall not pass. 
exactly in house slytherin mm. yeah should be a draw this one i think hans has in had enough he didn't manage to break through i'm expecting something like this although maybe live on Levon might get interested, no, if Hans pushes it. Yeah, the queen on h6 is not a happy piece, yeah? I wonder if you should try maybe bishop h3, just to make sure that nothing goes wrong. He plays g4, no. Play g4. Still g4 commit. is, of course, also very safe, right? Because probably black will play queen g6. Take. And here you can even continue with white, no? Maybe you don't win, but you can try it a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's not over yet. Yeah, knight c5, bishop d3, right? Yeah, maybe queen g6 is, is an ugly way of doing it. This, this, what happens? He played f5 like instantly. Yeah. He was ready for action. Can't white go bishop d3? But then probably fg, right? Surprisingly. And. Uh... King f8, and they just come to e7. Mm -hmm. Freaking chess. All right, so let's sum up what we've seen so far. Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, with a strong start. Mm -hmm. Road to 2900, part seven. Beats Jan Nepomneshi. That should bring him up to like 2860. I don't know what his rating is, 67. Still some way to go. Great start for the world champion. And the of Firuja against Fabiano. Interesting game. Looked like it was always balanced. Some provocative opening. Now we haven't checked yet if Fabi was actually better here. By Ali Reza. Takes, takes. No, apparently 0-0. Zero, zero. Mm -hmm. Then Fabi push it a bit here. Especially with his rook fe8. Computer likes the more natural knight c2 and knight d4. And here, to our surprise, Ali Reza decided not to play this position with the knight on d5. Instead, took on f6. And it was a draw. That leaves us with Niemann against Levon, where they quickly played f5, queen g5, fg. Check 98. Looks like Levon calculate this white probably has a perpetual if he wants it. <laughs> Something along these lines. Well, I can also go bishop e2, right? And um, here, yeah, yeah. Continue. Yep. Take. This knight is an idiot. If it was here, it would be a different story. Or e5, yeah, knight has to be closer to the to the battle, right? Yeah. Yeah, this knight is not really doing much, yeah. So most likely a draw there as well. As in Mamadyarov versus Wesley, but Wesley still has to suffer. Turn down the rook end game, understandably. This one. We also thought drawish. Yeah, could easily be four draws and Magnus winning. Yeah, this will be a very good round for Magnus. Widening the gap. I need to hit the bathroom again. Another short break, and then we go for the final round of excitement here with all these games ending in draws. Thank you so much for watching. Excellent. Hi. I'm John Chess, inventor of chess, and also your new stepdad. And we're very disappointed in you, son and or daughter, because you suck at chess. And so that is why you have to now sign up for Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that creates personalized lessons based on positions from your own games and turns your blunders into wonders. Link your Chess24 account or other online chess accounts today and learn the official Aim Chess Gambit, which is where you take your opponent's king and then you just f***ing eat it. <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna say that. In-depth analysis. Tactics trainer. Blunderer preventerer. Whatever the f*** this is. And a new personalized feed full of curated chess puzzles and memes. All of this and more available only at AIM Chess. 
hello? Courtney, did you know that the average aim chess user- Oh my god, stop calling me about fucking aim chess. <laughs> you heard it here first. Join aim chess today and become the world's greatest chess man in the world. Or chess woman? Hi, I'm Magnus Charlson. Wait, no. I'm Magnus Carlson, and I own Aim Chess. But now you are a Magnus Carlson instead, because you beat me at chess because of Aim Chess. That's right, you dumb piece of Aim Chess. They asked me to cut that last bit, but I won't. Get six months premium free by typing your credit card details, name, and full home address in the comments down below. Aim chess. They put the based in turn-based strategy. Why the f do you keep paying me for these? Aim chess. It stands for aim chess. Oh shit! I'm out of time. Uh, uh, the fucking uh, uh, the sign up for aim chess. E5. It's E5, Patsers. A complete repertoire against 1E4, based on 1E5, now available to study with Chessable's unique move trainer technology. The backbone is the Marshall Gambit against the Spanish, with 3 Knight F6 against the Italian. Jan Gustafsson has revisited all these lines he has played for 20 years and worked on as a second for Peter Lecco and Magnus Carlsen, amongst others, with the help of the most powerful engines out there. Leela Zero and Stockfish 10. This has led to many new discoveries and a repertoire ready to master on chessable that can serve the student for a long chess career. Maybe E4 doesn't exist after all. E5, it's E5, Patsers. Gains that confidence, uh, plays a few uh, good events, stops looking inwards into his own insecurities. I like the no expectation part, so like that's something that has gotten better because sure, it's like not my full-time job. It's definitely good for chess in India and now there is Olympiad also, so there'll be more people following and mm -hmm. taking up chess as professional sport. Yeah. And it's surprisingly concrete still, no? Like, yeah. E takes d4, good move, this d takes d4, this d takes d5. This line was essential and forced, but uh, also not uh, rocket science to map out. Played the Berlin, which I sort of expected, but I didn't really know what to do against, because in reality, very few people do. When we are playing a, an even game against someone of similar strength to us, usually we need to give something in order to obtain the initiative. Just how shrewd and cunning Ali Reza can be, even with. Uh, very little time. I want to show you a game just to prove that I play these lines. I played against former world number two and a bit of a superstar, Gata Kamsky. As a kid, I spent hours every day reading about chess, about openings, chess history, and games played between world champions, grandmasters, all of them. My apps make learning much easier. Everything I know you can find in my apps. Magnus Trainer, Tactics Frenzy, and Play Magnus. You can learn the basic rules of chess, train with our 400 lessons, and even play against my digital self. 
Download and try my apps for free. Hi, I'm John Chess, inventor of chess, and also your new stepdad. And we're very disappointed in you, son and or daughter, because you suck at chess. And so that is why you have to now sign up for AIM Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that creates personalized lessons based on positions from your own games and turns your blunders into wonders. Link your Chess24 account or other online chess accounts today. Welcome back, everybody. Round number one of the Sinkerfield Cup. The two big games, or the two biggest games on paper, are over. Magnus Carlsen defeating Jan Nepomneshi. I just saw on Twitter that out of the last seven games they played, Magnus now won five in Classical, which is pretty amazing. Um, and we have a draw in Ali Reza versus Karana. That leaves us with Hans. The chess speaks for itself, Niemann, trying to put pressure on Levon Aronia here. And the two endgames in Mamed Yarov versus Wesley. Should be a draw, but it's going to be suffering. And Dominguez against MVL, which I guess should just be a draw. Mm -hmm. Rostam, shall we just shall we go to Hans? Looks like the most exciting position. Yeah, it's probably the only game which has a chance uh, of ending in a result. Although I don't see how. Hans to move, plays queen g5. Maybe it takes on f3 and then something like queen f6. Okay, continue. Yeah, knight a4 and then king g3. Maybe exchanging queens is not what black wants. So unpleasant, man. Yeah, and God, maybe you should keep the queens, get some counterplay. Check. Hans might give a check first. Mm -hmm. And then King E3 also, yeah, could be here for a while. Computer says it's equal. Queen is active enough. Hard to argue with it. Once again, it's a stupid knight, yeah? If it was mm -hmm. two squares closer. Yeah, every day it's getting more and more difficult to argue with your computer. Yeah. Which is why your training sessions are now five hours of straight unplugged tactics exercises, no? <laughs> yes. Why argue with the computer? Hmm. So, Mr. Niemann, late entry into this tournament, replaced Richard Rapport. This is for a super tournament, but so far, even if he doesn't win, he's off to a good start. No putting pressure, showed an idea against the Berlin. Came very close to... Yeah, I'm playing Levan Aronian here. Yeah, no, this final bit is always difficult, right? When you get a really good position and then you know, Levan continues to make reasonable moves pretty fast. Yeah, at some point, I'm not sure if it was even there, but usually to win a game like that, you have to calculate some really complicated lines and also allow some counterplay. Mm -hmm. So these guys don't just collapse. <laughs> Very unfair. What's Levon been up to? He also played poorly at the Olympiad. I think he got sick. Um, other than that, does he live in St. Louis like everybody? Uh, last uh, last I heard, yes, but I haven't been in touch with him in a year or so. I don't know. I'm I'm so out of the loop. I I guess you know much more. I know well, nothing. Mm -hmm. I always be. wonder. I've never been to St. Louis. I wonder how it is. Like, do they all hang out? Like on Friday nights. Do you go to the club for some casual blitz games with, they, they hang with out. Fabi and, uh, and Lenje? They hang out all night. Wow. Not just Friday. It's beautiful, no? There is a, uh, there is a 
serious serious party atmosphere going there. Mm. If that's what you're looking for. Always. Who's the life of the party? Alejandro Ramirez? He's hosting it. He's bringing the booze. <laughs> yeah, I think you're trading in a very dangerous territory. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing. I'm just fishing. Fishing for, for stories here. Yeah. Alejandro has the fake ID, like McLovin. <clears throat> McLovin, yeah, that was a good movie. It's a great movie. It's a great movie, yeah. Super bad, not to be confused with the super bad tournament part of the Grand Chess Tour. Ninety six played by Levon, threatening to win the queen, and also asking for a repetition. No repetition with Hans. Yeah, queen d8, knight e8, and he'll probably go like king e3, you know. Yeah, we've had this, no? Yeah, we've had this. Queen f5, and compi said. Nietzsche. Yeah. Even in times like this, your compi still speaks Russian, you know? All compi speak Russian. Queen d8. Maybe he's repeating. We'll find out. He's a bit low on time as well. 16 minutes for the rest of the game. And it's dangerous. Been... No, we tried to beat Levon from this. Levon is a tricky guy. Your king is a little <laughs> open too. But also Hans will understand, yeah. He made little progress in 30 moves, so he will maybe think again, okay, maybe today is not the day you beat Levon. Yeah? Fair. We'll find out. Not much to say about the other games. Uh, Diarov is trying to untangle here. Yeah, so I just don't see H4 how. Huh? Point. H4. If black goes like king f6, for instance. Uh, H4, I thought maybe allows g4, but then you can take and then play king f4. Yeah, Maybe this is not a great thing. Still a draw, no, but mm. yeah, there should be also reasonably <coughs> overdraw you know, or rook h2. But okay, life goes on, yeah, game goes yeah. on. Speaking of game goes on, does Maxim have any chances here? Really, not enough pawns left, no? Yeah, bishop g6. Sure. I thought this uh, this position would be a draw even like this, yeah, bishop e4 and then king b3, king c4. Looks like just a draw. Mm -hmm. And you chill, yeah? Uh -huh. Yeah, King C3. Uh, find it difficult to believe uh, that King C4, that you can make progress here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could do better even. Uh, do we have to allow this pawn falling here? Oh, yeah, three four is stupid. Aren't we? F4 E4 is dangerous. Yeah, you don't want the spawn running down the board. Maybe you can still catch it by yeah. playing, playing with fire. Still a draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, should end peacefully. So I can't picture Linye joining these um, alcohol-riddled parties in St. Louis that you're mentioning. I didn't say anything. No. We're not getting any information, Chet. Trying. And, uh, well, we're here for nine more days. Yeah, give it time. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. Uh -huh. Okay, so it should be a draw, but Lenny has to be a bit careful. Well, Hans is repeating. 
How many times did they repeat? We've had. They probably had both. Should be two. Twice. We have eight. One. Two. Yeah. After 98, this would be official. But after 98, we haven't had this three times yet. I really can't count. One. Eleven apparently is claiming a draw. Two. Three. Yeah, it's the third time. Yeah, so this is a draw. And uh, we're left with... Uh... Yeah, with Linier and with Wesley. Sound excited. It's exciting positions. Mm -hmm. Okay, three. Karof giving his rook some scope. Yeah, black should continue standing, right? King G7, for instance. And... Seems hard to untangle without h4, which yeah, you need you need h4 for sure. Leads to more exchanges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even here, you can apparently keep standing. Hey, king g6, king f6, yeah. No, he's gonna try, but and yeah, this game is officially drawn. Bit of a scare there for Levon. Let's see at this position. Yeah, both. Not Levon, what you want out of this opening. Mm -hmm. Levon and Fabio also yeah, survived a big scare today. Mm -hmm. What time is it in St. Louis? It's what? Mm -hmm. Five hours difference? Uh, seven hours difference. Seven. They start at they, 1 p.m. their time? Yeah, they start 1 p.m. It's early. Oh, well, they have a reason for starting at 1 p.m. So they can start the party at, at 8 p.m. Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, so that by 8, yeah, everybody has had their fair eight. share of food and drink. Everyone's had food and you're headed to, to Alejandro's flat for, uh, for the after party. Do you really not, a, not a word. <laughs> Oh, they also have this chess house, no? Where like sometimes guests are being hosted. Maybe that's the party location. Yes. Now we're getting somewhere. Maybe h3 saves all pawns. I know h3, rook h2, yeah, that doesn't quite save all pawns. Yeah, you will lose one pawn. h4? Still tough, no? Should G4 and E4. Yeah, you'll get have... one of them. Yeah, you you get you'll get it. Yeah, you will get it. But it will be a draw. Oh, blunder! Now this we shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. This works in E4 King D2. Yeah, but of course, the fact that Linear has to be careful is uh, is already a sign that something went wrong, right? After the opening that he had, uh, this should have never happened. John Fernandez, greetings, is informing us that it's 4.52 in St. Louis. Still early in the day. Yeah. I always thought that 1 p.m. was a difficult starting time. Seems strange to me. 3 p.m. feels so right, no? Like, you have time to prepare, even get lunch if you want to. Mm -hmm. 1 p.m., what are you going to do? Now lunch, lunch is very important before the game. You gotta have your lunch. I usually didn't have breakfast or lunch in my chess playing days. No. Um, and lunch, I mean, you either have a breakfast or the lunch. Yeah, I, have, <coughs> Sorry. I have a problem usually at the Bundesliga finding a lunch companion. And no, you're always there when the preparation starts at. Uh, <clears throat> At 12.30, you're, you're ready to go for lunch. Well, I usually text people. Yeah, nobody, nobody wants to eat with me. Uh, I, I'm beginning to wonder. Maybe it's personal. 
Might be, but I don't think people are going for their separate lunches at 12.30. I just think people have breakfast, then you get the pairings at 12 and you prepare. No, yeah, that's... but this is, I think, the point. Yeah, people like preparing. And I just want I just want to get some food. You know? <laughs> I'm a so, simple guy. <laughs> food is very important. Yeah. Wesley, he's played H5. Yeah, he, he's going for mate. He's taking it into his own hands. Because now h4, I can also go g4, right? To take this pawn on g2. Although maybe not well, you know? Company seems to like this less. Yeah, this also looks dangerous, you yeah. Apparently still a draw. <clears throat> This is not great. No, so you will play. Well, you could give a check, I guess. This should be straightforward, right? Takes and rook g2. And draw. We'll catch the pawn. Like Ritzen on the set is saying, not lying, my favorite movie is Constantine. I think Rustam likes the movie as well. There's no way this is a coincidence, like Ritzen, that you would randomly say your favorite movie is Constantine. First of all, I don't believe it. I don't think anybody's favorite movie is Constantine, That's just not including true. Rustam. The movie has quite a cult following. So is there like is there like a Reddit <clears throat> Constantine forum where you exchange your your passion with other Constantine hats or where, where does this cult following meet? I don't do social media. So how do you know? <clears throat> it's just conversational evidence. You run into other Constantine hats out there? No, I just kind of, I, I I was so impressed by the movie. I Googled a bit and it said that, you know, the movie flopped at the box office, but then slowly obtained a kind of a cult following. And this is the extent of my knowledge. Fair enough. I, I don't know if a random, I mean, when you say it like this, it just sounds completely random, right? And unreliable, but that's what Google told me, you know? If we and can't Google... trust Google anymore. What can we trust? Exactly. Yeah. Google says it has a cult following. <laughs> it has a cult following, right? <laughs> Nothing to debate there. H4 played by Mamad Yarov. What do you think Mamad Yarov's favorite movie is? I can't, I can't tell. I'm not sure he's a movie kind of guy. You don't think he goes watch, I don't know, Fast and the Furious 5 with his buddies? I think this is more Karakin territory, you know, although that could, could, could happen, yeah. I don't know. Never broached the, the territory. I've learned wow. recently that Wesley likes listening to Eminem. That was a surprise. But it seems like Eminem is the, the chess player's rapper, no? Everyone likes Eminem. Anish. Wesley, all big Eminem fans. I don't particularly like Eminem. There you go. Always a contrarian. Yeah, um, he just he just sounds uh, he just sounds too angry to me. Like always angry, and I just want to hear you know some more relaxed music. Snoop Dogg, you know. Fair enough. The lyrics are good, though. No, like. Eminem, he has a way with words. No, his his, his lyrics are really great. Eh? Just his performance is usually just too emotional for me. I hear you. So, who's your your favorite rapper? Snoop Dogg. Uh, Snoop Dogg, Busta Rhymes. Busta Rhymes, he's not emotional. He sounds angry to me once in a while. Well, but he also has other songs, yeah. And Eminem always sounds angry to me. 
Um, What's your favorite Buster Rhymes song? I really like that the the Genesis album. Um, has, so that's, uh, that's Phil Collins. That's not Buster. Rhymes. <laughs> yes, that that too. Yes. My favorite is Wuha. Got you all in check. But Darius sounds a bit angry. Yeah. Also, okay. Kendrick Lamar is, of course, pretty special. Nah, that's too smart for me. <laughs> Although, I, I don't know. Recently, I, I'm told every now and then that it's no longer cool to like Kendrick Lamar. I know he's apparently in some sort of trouble. Ah, oh, that I wasn't even aware of. Uh, how could Kendrick Lamar get in trouble? Is, is I don't know. Um... <clears throat> No clue. Where do you stand on Jay Z? Are you are you Jay Z fan? No, 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 no. Like sometimes I listen to some Tupac, but but also I'm not big on rap in general. I think it's not really my territory. Are you a big music guy? I'm not sure we talk much about music. Mm -hmm. I listen to some sad stuff, yeah, like Leonard Cohen and Tom Waits and like this sort of things. The Smith, you look like a the Smith person. <laughs> well, if it sounds sad, then yeah. Sounds pretty sad. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, whatever you, 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 whatever you tell me to listen to, yeah, like you know, some German rap. But yeah, I will usually. Recommend trashy German rap, so I'm not sure yeah. good influence there. Yeah, usually, like, with all your recommendations, the first 10 seconds are fine, and then then it goes downhill very quickly. I've heard, I've heard that before about, in other areas, first 10 seconds of <laughs> goes downhill. I'm sure you have. Hmm. Wesley. He's in some trouble, no? Rook G2, King F4, and then the last ditch attack. This looks dangerous. Mm -hmm. And rook d6, yeah. Rook d6, king f7, yeah. You need to create some counterplay. Yeah, you could you could queen that this pawn. Yeah. Be enough counterplay, yeah. You queen that pawn, that's that's a lot of counterplay. <clears throat> rook d6 is the wrong square, yeah. I need to do what? Check an e4. Um, what's my strategy here? Rook a7, king f6, e4. Looks very scary. No threats, apparently. I don't know. Feels like stuff could still happen here. Yeah, it feels like. Uh... I mean, this is this is the moment where the guy who defended for a while might start getting dangerous just one step before the draw. Yeah. Suddenly, the dangers they look real. Also, he's thinking. Is he thinking about this? Because this looks terrible. No? Uh. Rook e six looks losing. No. That's just a piece. Yeah, can't do it. No, it does take on g2. King f4, I would predict. Yep. King f4 is a good prediction. Yeah, well done. Yeah, I felt good about that one. Bishop d3 is also a weird move. No, like. Yeah, but yeah you have played. to go Bishop d3. <laughs> Everything yeah, else is. No uh, choice. It's vulnerable. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Rook d6 looks like a natural square, but just doesn't do anything, right? Yeah, computer move is rook a3 for whatever reason. Saying great square, please pick another one.
Looks incredibly dangerous once the king gets here. Yes, the um, rook d6 plate as expected by you. Yeah, I, just, I thought this was a very Check natural it. square, yeah, and he, he just goes for it. Problem is here, black. Black is too fast. And so if I go check, to of course, G3? Okay. yeah, then probably this is ninety six check, and you find some square for the king, right? Go somewhere, else. Yeah. yeah, probably the only square though, yeah. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but good enough. Good enough. This is not a winning attempt, is it? I was wondering about this, but it uh, be so little. Yeah. Of course, you can still try to bring your knight to g3. And um, yeah, but then what? Uh, yeah, probably nothing. And then bishop e8, and we just kind of look at each other. Still, Wesley has some thinking to do. So, 60 minutes. In the meantime, the other game, Linier understood he has to give this pawn, but found, found this construction, which should give him a reasonably trouble free draw. No, like here, you give a check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rook, rook d1 and maybe rook d4 check. Yeah, it's his idea. We could block it if we wanted to. Yeah, if you block, then well, king c6, bishop e4 is no progress. Yeah, there's just no progress here. Nah, it's just a draw. Yeah. <clears throat> Quinn is saying, yeah, we need a list of great German rappers. I'm so out of touch. Hmm. Probably Rosta, since he has kids that are listening to mean German rap all the time. It's a better source of information than me. Yeah. No, sometimes German rap is too much for me. I hear you. Are you familiar with 187 Straßenbande? <laughs> no, I'm not. Have you heard of Bushido and Flair? I've heard of Bushido, yes. Bushido, the way of the samurai. Different Bushido. <laughs> <laughs> the chat uh, in Chess24 was, uh, was re re requesting a rap opera. They're saying we have rock operas, so why shouldn't we have rap operas? Must exist, no? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It must exist, yeah. Isn't this Hamilton sort of a rap opera? Never seen, never heard. Never will. You haven't heard of Hamilton? No. I, ha I have heard of Hamilton, but nothing. Uh, I mean, I haven't actually heard uh, a minute of music from Hamilton. Or... That's the thing. Everyone says the rapping, the music is so great in Hamilton. I've never met anybody who's listening to the the Hamilton album on Spotify. Well, you could check and see how many listeners it has. Probably it does have millions of listeners. But everything does have millions of listeners. Not the Chicken Chester podcast. Now, how hmm. many listeners have you got? Hundreds. That's not too bad. Hmm. It's true. Other rap operas? I know. Sounds like something Kendrick Lamar would do. Bishop d3 plate. So Maxime brought the rook from the other side. But even this check doesn't do much. For yeah, him. King c3. He's controlling b5 just in case. I'm not sure if this could be. 
a way forward. Let's see, maybe probably not in this here. Yeah. Now we yeah. run b5 and but the better way. Four. Bishop d3, king a4, but this should be a draw, right? Like just never makes progress, does it? Feels less nice to put the pawn on b5, giving these squares, but it's still nothing apparently. King goes here. Yeah, the drawing sure. line should be huge, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Mr. So has given a check. Sure and peacefully. Mm -hmm. That's all there is. We have Carlson winning what looks like the only game of the day. Crushing victory against Jan Nepomnesi. Carlson said that, yeah, it just looked like he was playing a player in bad form. And Jan missed too many of his maneuvers. And yeah, he was happy with the opening choice and paraphrasing, obviously, that he managed to get a position where Jan could do this. But overall, he didn't seem to read too much into it. Ali Reza drew against Fabi. Niemann drew against Aronian. Both black players had to defend carefully there. But in the end, it was no way to win. <clears throat> and that leaves us with Mamed Yarov against So and Dominguez against MVL. Both should end in draws, but this position is a much more exciting one here. Something could still very much go wrong. After King e5, we can't run yet. G3, 96. This is bad news, I'm assuming. You have no square for your king, right? Because this runs into knight g5 later. It's knight g5, knight h3, no? No? Maybe rook d7, rook g7, no? Much better. Mm -hmm. Oh, this just wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he should not touch the G pawn. <clears throat> Plays King F seven. Can we get mated here somehow? I know that's Rook F five. Computer says here what is better. Now this is the construction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the g6 also doesn't look like a safe square. One wants to go to e8 somehow, no? By feeling. Still mildly yeah. scary. Yeah. We get made. Rook g5. And then maybe check, check, and rookie seven back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now nah, Wesley's got this. Tips to saying, isn't this the first time Ali Reza managed to draw Fabi? As far as I remember, they've played twice before, both of which Fabi won. No, they played some more, no? Like no, they definitely played uh, Norway chess, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some Norway chess. I think Waikanze and uh, the Norway chess, they had some games where Fabio was pressing and Malires was defending. Also, they played <clears throat> twice in the candidates. No, Fabio didn't win. Yeah, Both Malires three. won their last game, actually. Yeah, the... That's the one win.
that also was the position that Fabi should have never lost. Yeah, never in thought. Yeah, that was a bit shocking, but yeah, okay, just you could tell he was done with the tournament, and sometimes the position doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, you just can't can't play. Yeah. Sometimes you're done with the tournament, sometimes the tournament is done with you. No? You can take the player out of the tournament, but you can't take the tournament out of the player. <laughs> We're very wisdomous. Hmm. Bishop D3, yeah, and should be. Keep the pawn. Yeah, we'll get this. Yeah, the king will walk back and he'll walk around, but there's still not much to do. Yeah, White will put his bishop on e2, king on to e3, and it should be should be plenty. Yeah? This looks fairly sturdy. I'm not hundred percent sure that black would be winning even you know e5 against f3. I was wondering about this. There are some of these positions, pawn versus pawn, that are a draw somehow. Yeah? Like, I'm not sure mm -hmm. if that's one of them. But I think, wise men, maybe Luke van Veli. Someone once told me this is a known fortress, but with a pawn somewhere else. It's not, I, I can't mm -hmm. remember stuff, unfortunately. I think it was F3 versus E5. It must have been one way, yeah, if it's a wise man. Mm -hmm. The wisest man we know. You don't become a Dutch senator. Without wisdom. Why? But you could become a politician in Germany. Yeah, I was not sure I was being serious. <laughs> hmm. Okay, this is just a draw because the king is too far away too. But if I go king c5 instead of rook c3? Making d6. Yeah, in general, I was curious if uh, okay, this loses, of course, but mm -hmm. but if we play more accurately, it still seems to be a draw. This is a draw, yeah. Rook b4. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, good to know. Yeah, I think this is what the wise Luke taught me. You have been well taught. Yeah. I think it's a video series on Chess 24 where he teaches me. I forgot what it's called. Van Veli's Endgame something. Beat me. Mm -hmm. He did beat me plenty. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we've established why can even blunder the B5 pawn and still a draw, which doesn't make this position more exciting. Uh, it does not, yeah. Now, as I'm asked in the chat if if I think that beginners benefit from watching these games. I guess you always benefit from watching a good game of chess, right? No matter your level. I think the most beginners can benefit is getting private lessons from Rostam Kazamchanov. He's busy, but I think that he can target your strength, your weaknesses, the way to improve so much better in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But normally, uh, I should respect the priority, right? First, you talk to Leko. Of course. First, you you talk to Leko if he's busy, and then then you then you talk to is giving classes in India. <clears throat> then you get in touch with Rustam. Wesley. Wesley's pushing. And Yara's looking for a checkmate, but is there a checkmate? I don't even see how there could be a checkmate. Well, but... Why would he allow this pawn to get here? Well, he can always sort of stop this pawn, right? Knight f5 and then rook f6, g6. But the question is why, right? Mm 
just rook g6 no? okay shot still always end peacefully no fascinating stuff <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Hmm. So I'm being asked about my over the board plans. What are your over the board plans? I just don't know. Like maybe I can play some. Ah, actually, I play a tournament uh, soon, but it's Blitz and Rapid. Hmm. Still over the board. Still over the board. I wonder how rusty I'll be. I'll play Thailand Open if I get my my shit together before. Like when is that? Currently, late October. And what is it that you have to get together in order to do this? I should stop hanging all my pieces and uh, no, maybe look at some openings. To five hours of tactics, you, you know how it works. Currently, I can't, ambitious. I can't play chess. And I'm not sure how to fix that quickly. If anybody has any advice out there for adult improvers, let me know. I can try Googling it. That would help. <clears throat> I'm not looking forward to it. There's going to be all these kids. They will be younger, hungrier. Underrated her. It's gonna and be rough. Stronger. <laughs> stronger. Faster. Smarter. Haven't you won that that open like seven times? No, just twice. I played ten times. I won twice. Is that good odds? Which is a win rate of like sixty percent. But you enjoyed it ten times, haven't you? Sure. Well, apparently you should get Leko to help you, and if he's busy, get Kramnik. Leko should join me to Thailand. I'll show him around. Have a great time. Yeah, no, Leko is fun to be around. Yeah. Great food. Nice hotels. Everything he likes would be there. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, if Sophie lets him, yeah, probably she can. She can join. Would be a great, great TV show as well, no? Like uh, Peter in Thailand, meet, meeting people, trying foods. Um, I'd watch it. <laughs> You'd watch anything. <laughs> mm. Mm. He could say, which beach is the most underrated? Like, would be. Join me, Peter. Nah, not Pattaya. I don't think that's Lakos scene. Chiang Mai. The tournament is in Chiang Mai. It's supposed to be nice. Is it always a different place? Yeah. It's very confusing because I call it the Bangkok Chess Club Open. But it's very often not in Bangkok. From what I hear, Bangkok is a difficult city. Why? I know. I saw Hangover too. It felt tough. I'm not sure that's a fair representation of Bangkok. It's much tougher in reality. <laughs> All these movies are so ridiculous. There's also a movie called Bangkok Dangerous with Nicolas Cage. Great movie. I never saw that that new Nicolas Cage movie about the unbearable weight of this uh, of tremendous talent. Ah no, it doesn't sound like we need to watch it. No, we know already. 
And that one is supposed to be good. They're all great. But for me, I don't know. I'm old. I'm set in my ways. I just rewatch <clears throat> the greatest trilogy of all time. The Rock, Con Air, Face Off, Back to Back to Back. That's like, peak Nicolas Cage. I like I like Face Off. Who doesn't? Face you say you, you don't like The Rock? I just don't know The Rock, but I, I do know Face Off. Okay, like I've let some of some stuff slide here. You're not knowing random pop culture, but not to know The Rock is a crime. It's Sean Connery is so charming. He's like 65 years old, playing mm. a 60 year old, and he he has more energy than anybody else in the movie. The plot is also great. Alcatraz has been captured by terrorists, but they're good terrorists. Like they have good intentions. Mm -hmm. Still, Nicolas Cage and The Rock, they go to confront them using the knowledge. Not The Rock, sorry. Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery. The Rock is not in that movie. It's called The Rock. <laughs> using the knowledge that Sean Connery has about the tunnels below Alcatraz. It's a fantastic yeah. movie. Everybody knew that, no? I would think so. Then there's Con Air, which you probably also haven't seen. No, Con Air, I, I think I've it's, seen, yeah. It's more of an acquired taste. It's not as good as The Rock. Yeah, I thought it was complete rubbish, but yeah. Those are strong words that I disagree with, but yeah. <laughs> the Rock is a better movie. What about the City of Angels? Um, I don't know. There was a Hollywood remake. Doesn't that doesn't that have a shady reputation? Angel City. Huh? I think it's called just City of Angels. No, what is it called? Okay, no, I thought you meant the actual cities. Huh? No. Ah, no, that sounds like some weird art house Rustam stuff. Like no, it was just just a Hollywood Wim Wenders uh, remake. Just Isn't that uh, the Himmel über Berlin or some weird movie? You uh -huh. know, and uh, I thought this was nice. It was with with Nicolas Cage and and Meg Ryan. Hmm. Nicolas Cage understandably plays an angel. Who else? Who falls in love with Meg Ryan? Else? It's just beautiful. I just yes, quite. Okay, you're you're really selling that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a very watchable movie. What happens then? The angel sends Mike Ryan an email, or is that a different movie? <laughs> that is a different movie. <laughs> okay. The angel can't sleep in Seattle. <laughs> All yeah. of them are different movies. The angel meets Sally. Wesley, Wesley's hanging in there. Hmm. What do you think if you put your boy Eric Aisi in this tournament instead of, I don't know, let's say instead of Linier, what would Eric Aisi's expected score be? Rating wise? No, what you would think you would score. I know, plus two. Wow. That's a lot of points. I mean, I think he's stronger than most of these players. Is he stronger than Wesley? I don't think so, yeah. Wow. Wesley's pretty good. Yeah, but I can. Stronger than... Now, let's not keep playing this game. No, I think this, this whole system shows that there is a certain lag between, you know, when you get stronger than when you get your rating and you get your invitations. Well, that's logical. No, the rating needs to, some time to catch up to the strength. Yeah, but even when it does catch up, yeah, for instance, this is what Grand Chess 2... And the Grand Chess 2 invitations, uh, they are kind of, they go, they date six months back, right? And sometimes they're based on the results of the last Grand Chess 2. So sometimes we'll work with a lag, which goes back 18 months. 
and uh, they have these players, some of them, they still behave like they own the world, whereas, in fact, they soon will be forgotten champions of yesteryear. Wow. Which of the players behaves like they own the world and will soon be forgotten? <laughs> well, I'll keep this information to myself. Wow. Maxim. Okay, still a draw. Yeah, I think Wesley got this, yeah. Wesley does have this. All right, so match Carlson Erigaisi starting tomorrow, 14 games, classical. Who's the favorite? Uh, Magnus, I think, is a bit stronger than everybody else at the moment. Jordan Fit is saying, I only watch chess if Jan is commentating. It's funny because I do exactly the same thing. <laughs> 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 which might not be ideal for my commentary prowess. They exchange rooks here. Still draw. Yeah, there is nothing to be done here. Yeah, this is a draw. Now the question is how long will Maxim shuffle his pieces around? So not very long, Willie. Like, what's that to hope for? Could he win the B5 form with expert shuffling? I don't think so. No. Yeah, we just chill now. If the rook leaves the fourth rank, you go here. Yeah. D5, you give a check. I don't see it. Oh, this is exciting. Uh, but no one's going to give the H pawn. A lot of pride there. Not Wesley. Some others, they might just think it's all fun and games, put the king on H8. Wesley knows that the rules could always change in the future. Stalemates are counted as a loss. You don't want that on your record. You don't want that on your resume, right? Sure. No. Chess, we call this the opposition. If you stand in front of the enemy king by two squares, the enemy king can't advance. This is, by the way, forbidden in Chinese chess. Opposition? Well, you cannot face the other king unopposed, like unobstructed in Chinese chess. Oh, interesting. Which creates like a very nice attacking patterns. Because, for instance, if my king, let's say, is on f4 and your king is on g8 in Chinese chess, you wouldn't be able to go to the f file. Yeah, so it controls a lot of file, a lot of squares this way. Mm. Ah, so you can't even go to f8 or f7. Basically, you cannot face... So the, the king, king is like a rook. Yeah, the king can become like a rook in the attack. Yeah, in mm. Chinese chess, it's very tricky. Let's see. Mm -hmm. But also, if my king is on g8, I can just chill on g7 and you can never pass, yeah? Well, I cannot pass with the king, but if, let's say, I have a rook somewhere, I start, I can push you into the corner, you know? Okay, this king endgame in... Chinese chess, is this a draw or can I like zook you with king f6? Well, king f6, you'd go well, king h7. Yeah, king g5. King g5, and you'd be winning. Yeah, king h8, king g Yeah, that's what I mean. Win, mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Because stalemate also wins in chi Chinese chess. Wow. Chinese well, chess assuming, sounds like a good game. Assuming you could do this with your king, yeah? 
the reality is the king is not allowed to leave uh, the bottom of the port. I see. So we remember no opposition in Chinese chess. Yeah, there are some rules. Yeah, for instance, Go does not allow for the repetition of the position, I think. Hmm. So a lot of chess possibilities to make a draw are not allowed in other games. Do you play a lot of other games? Do you play Chinese chess? I used to Go, play Chinese. Shogi. Used to play Chinese chess. Uh, it was always too stupid for Go. And Shogi, I, I, I just tried once. It's difficult. The Chinese chess is very close to our chess, so it's a very nice game to play. But they don't have cool pieces, no? They have some rook and some bishop. Cannon? How is cannon not a cool piece? What can the cannon do? Well, a cannon moves like, like a rook. That's what I'm but saying. It, it's but the it, best capture, piece. it captures through an obstacle. Ah, so it's like a knight rook? Well, it, it cap, for instance, if I have a cannon on e3, you have a bishop on e6 and king on e8, it's a check. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like a knight, no? Yeah, but if you go then bishop c8, for instance, if there is no obstacle, I cannot take it anymore. Why? So it moves like a rook, but cannot so capture. So it needs an so obstacle. It can only capture a, through obstacles. Yeah, and it needs an obstacle to capture, which makes it remarkably helpless in some endings where there are no pieces around. That's a weird rule. <laughs> you sort of shuffle it around and you cannot take anything. Mm, we need to work on this. When's Chinese chess 2.0 coming? <laughs> You have to change the rules of Chinese chess until it's like chess, right? No, no, no. How can you have a rook? So here, I go rook a3, bishop d3. Here the rook is, is attacking f3, but not well, d3. The cannon, the cannon would be able the not to rook. take on f3. Yeah, but not on d3. Not on d3, no. That's weird. What kind of cannon is this? It can only shoot over an obstacle? Yes. I mean, how is that based in on anything? <laughs> well, not on reality, I guess. Yeah. It's a weird cannon. So now if you wanted to protect F3, it just, it just you know, you just move the bishop away. In Chinese Stood. chess. Like this, yeah. yeah. And now if you wanted to give a check to the white king, you would have to go cannon to c8 and then to e8. That would be a check. Or e1, no? Or so e1. I mastered the rules. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But if we gave the check... Then you move the bishop and it's not a check anymore. Then, yeah. <clears throat> okay, it's hard to reproduce here because it's not yeah. allowed to... But with the bishop on e2 and king on e4, cannon e8 would win the bishop. Mm. Ah. Because this would be a check, and then uh, you would take king the bishop. has to go. But could we recapture with the king? Well, the king doesn't go diagonally in Chinese chess. Ah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It sounds difficult to me. Yeah, I mean, some, some, uh, some getting used to, but it's a lovely game. There used to be this rumor they have knights in Chinese chess, no? Like, yeah, they knights are in fact they knights and rooks. Uh, I know they rooks are the only pieces which are exactly like chess pieces, mm -hmm. and they knights can jump. They can't jump. No, so you can't block them. So, for instance, if you have a knight on d three attacking the pawn on e five. And I go rook d4, for instance. You cannot go to e5 anymore. Because I was always taught to exchange the knights quickly against Chinese players. Because they're if they grew up with Chinese chess, they'd be amazing with knights. But I didn't know they had non-jumping knights. They have non-jumping knights. So compared to a Chinese knight, our knight is very, very strong. Mm. That's useful information. I guess. <laughs> Okay, guys, this is a draw. What are you hoping for? How many moves have they already made in this endgame? This move 60. 
we've reached this end game on move 45. So only 15. Wow. And Troy Chell saying, Jan, how do you feel about your boy Blue Bomb qualifying for Fisher Random World Championship to play against Magnus and Wesley? Yeah, I was happy. I saw he beat Navarra. That's a very cool achievement. He's a very good chess player. Didn't have the greatest Olympiad. But I'm not sure because I suck at it. I don't want to accept Fisher Random as a more pure like test of chess strength. But I think it goes to show what a strong player Blue Bomb is that in this format. He can also do amazing things. And yeah, hope he does well. He's reigning European champion, yeah. It's also... Yeah, it's not like he, he's not good in, in regular chess, but yeah, I was impressed. Uh, Maxim actually reached some sort of a semi tuk -tuang now. Yeah? <clears throat> Is this the position? Oh, this is the position pawn on b5, king on d5, so bishop d3, rook b3. Okay, engine doesn't care, it just wants to get and, it over uh, with, which yeah. is fair enough. Oh, this will do, yeah. Can you get in trouble here? Yeah, this is losing, which is believable. And then b6 is pretty well, much. Yeah, yeah, spot on this, yeah, yeah. Three minutes for Mr. Dominguez. Who's playing tomorrow? <clears throat> Carana Dominguez. Hans Niemann against Namid Yarov. Nepomnishi Alireza. Oh, Levo Magnus. Interesting. MVL versus Wesley. Yeah, Another we'll fun see, round. We we'll see a lot of excitement tomorrow, even more than today. Linear yeah. plays B6, by the way, and I think we'll probably be done very soon. Should wrap it up. Wrap it up. King T6, you can insist. He probably should insist a bit better than this, no? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not much to say. Rook versus Bishop is a draw. You head to the wrong corner. That's what I do. Probably not the only way to do it. So I do it. This is a very sturdy construction. Is this always stalemate? You could argue maybe we're not forced to run into the corner, but why not? Yeah, most people, they know the corner, they run into the corner. I'm always headed straight for the corner. It's like back in school. Yeah. Boom, put me in the corner. Slightly anxious usually to blunder mate somewhere here. But if you just stick to your corner, it's very hard to get mated. Yeah. Still applies. Amazingly, some people still lose this in a in a right corner. How exactly? Well, like for instance, rook a seven. Like king trade, yeah. Huh. Uh, like if instead of going here, if I go, um. Like a king g6, sometimes people go bishop e6. Oh, yeah, that's wrong. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, this is kind of one way to lose it. Yeah. You should always check your check after this mm -hmm. sequence. Yeah, in general, e6 is, is a dangerous square. Don't go there. Go to the back, yeah. This is safe. And now we can go back. Mm. But maybe the rule of thumb is the further you can go, the better. Really, like this is also mm -hmm. fine. The problem is very hard for the rook to attack the bishop and cover the check square. What are they doing? King e4, king d6. Why play king e3 here? Okay, why not? King takes. And bishop to f1. You want that pawn? I want that pawn. I'm not getting that pawn. No? Never. The game continues. The game continues, yeah, alas. Maybe this is better, yeah? And then king d5 and bishop f5, e4. This looks clean, yeah. Rook b1 on the board. How was the chicken scouting for next week po week's podcast? Where was our chicken of the week? Um, <laughs> I don't know. No great acts of chickenness have been committed. Well, I that, so, yeah. But that wasn't chickenness. That was just misunderstandingness. No, or I don't know. Mm -hmm. Ali Reza is hard to call a chicken. He pushes for a win every game with both colors. Maybe Hans, but it also seems like a reasonable decision. I don't think we can call that too chicken. Yeah, no, by now he had no, he had made no progress. Yeah. No. No, this tournament is not is not big on chicken. Uh, Wesley is always around, but today was just a normal defensive effort. Yeah, it's it's not a great chicken tournament. Lenier is not a chicken, no? He just yeah, has a classical style. Yeah, I mean, if you have a chance, chicken, no? he'll, yeah. he'll beat you. Yeah, this is yeah. this is the thing. So what chicken do? <laughs> he does enjoy his long theoretical semi-bluffs, which is a chicken, chicken trait as well, but I'm not sure that makes him chicken. No, but once the fight starts, he uh, is yeah, really yeah. courageous. Yeah, just yeah, just anti chicken. No, he's like Peter Griffin, the mortal <laughs> enemy of all chicken. Yeah, hates, does hate that chicken. <laughs> well, that is a pretty tough chicken that he has to deal with. It's a very obnoxious chicken, indeed. Yeah. <clears throat> Also, it's a big instigator, that chicken, always causing trouble. Okay, we're getting there. Run to the corner, Lenier. No, you Very dangerous of the game center. Five, yeah. Wow. You have to recapture. Very important. Only move. There is no more corner running. That's it. No one puts Linier in a corner. This is it. This is it for today. Yeah. So it was a nice round. A the world good. champion. With a nice victory. Everybody else draws. More tomorrow. Indeed. Looking forward. Yeah. Thanks so much, Rustam. It's been fun. Thanks, everybody, for watching check out all the great things and on chessable on chess 24 aim chess and who knows whatever else there is to check out it's been a pleasure see you tomorrow
See you tomorrow. Thank you, Jan. E5, it's E5, Patsers. A complete repertoire against one E4, based on one E5, now available to study with Chessable's unique move trainer technology. The backbone is the Marshal Gambit against the Spanish, with three Knight F6 against the Italian. Jan Gustafsson has revisited all these lines he has played for 20 years and worked on as a second for Peter Lecco and Magnus Carlsen, amongst others, with the help of the most powerful engines out there, Leela Zero and Stockfish 10. This has led to many new discoveries and a repertoire ready to master on chessable that can serve the student for a long chess career. Maybe E4 doesn't exist after all. E5, it's E5 Patsers.